we might be drunk, folks. Here we are. We're here. We're here. Hold on. That's, wow. That's that unpleasant. Was, that, that was a, that a was, threefer. Yeah, that was too much. <laughs> Sorry. That was like the three godfathers, but only the third godfather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had Chipotle earlier. That'll Did do you? It. Yeah. I go, love Chipotle. Do you go sour cream or cheese? No, I and don't. And you still fart like that. No dairy. Respect. Thank you. That stuff does nothing. I know you're trying to sober up right now. This shit does nothing. You don't think, huh? It, have you tried it? I have. I've been drinking I've, a thousand of these. It's given me so much false hope. I always think this stuff's going to cure my hangover. No. I always think it's going to prevent the hangover. What does it do? It just fucking fills me with sugar, and I'm still hungover. Yeah, the sugar's a bummer. I didn't know there was a lot of sugar. Is that right? Uh, not, a, not a ton, but enough that I'm like, eh. Yeah, all right. Yeah, look at that. Let's see. I'll stick with coffee and keep shriveling up. Yeah, diuretic, by the way. Diarrhea, I'll tell you that much. I'll tell you, <laughs> this stuff gives me a ton of diarrhea. Woo. I spray the bowl like a fucking salad, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's a Pollock movie in there. Oh, I'll tell you. Mm. It's all right. Sally's back. back. We missed you, buddy. Google oh, bitch. Good to be back. Good to have you. The only guy who was rocking Hawaiian shirts when they weren't cool, then they were... And now they're back to not. <laughs> good to have I'm you. I'm going to ride it out. You look good, man. Oh, hey. Feeling good. We think you're cooler than Ron Jeremy. We don't care what you're doing. <laughs> <this show. laughs> Fuck those comments. Hey. And you never raped, so we'll give you that, too. Yes. He can't get it up. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, this is a classic photo. Those are the, uh, that was like a, a play on uh, of Mice and Men, these two. Yeah. Uh, is that what it was? Because yeah. they're real gangster types. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But okay. I think the, the little guy and the big guy. Oh, uh, okay. But, uh, yeah, they were like, uh, how you doing, C? Yeah, Muggsy. Yeah. Classic. The tiny gangster. Yeah. Funny how gangsters changed, you know, throughout the years. It was Italian, and then it went to black, and who knows where it is now. Mm. Jewish? Maybe Madoff? I well, wish. it was Jewish before Italian. Was it? Yeah, yeah. Sure, man. The really? Schultz mob. What? Mm -hmm. And Jewish boxers, by the way. Hey, we were tough. Yeah, oppression is a is a hell of a motivational motivational tool. Sure. Yeah, you don't see a lot of Jewish boxers these days, though. No, they're too bad, too busy killing it financially. Yeah, they don't need Fucked to box. Up back, bad neck. Just <laughs> enough about myself. Uh, I know. Can you imagine the Jewish boxing league at at the end of the day? Like, my oh, vey, where's the ice pack? <laughs> yeah. He's out for uh, five to seven weeks with bad allergies. <laughs> yeah. Quick, we need some Claritin D. He's fading in this corner. <laughs> Shlomo's going up against dairy. <laughs> He's ruined. Ding, ding. One, um, two, three, four. Oh, fuck my diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Well, he Sorry. lost because it was a drafty boxing ring. <laughs> More Jewish stereotypes. All right. This break. <laughs> Now, all right. Uh, yeah, man. How you doing? Oh, you, you started like, like you had like a thing. No, now no, no, no. here we go, folks. What do you got? You're you're trying to kill this hangover. I'm trying. Well, I'm trying. We had a we had a long episode with a, a another guest. We really drank it up. So I got the the granules at the bottom here, and I can't get them all in. And I want to make sure I get all of it in the one gulp. Yeah, dude. So you got to mix it up, or they that stick load all over your fucking chest. Yeah, they you stick to there. the bottom. Here Keep we go. Swigging it. Keep swigging it. <laughs> and here's the money shot, folks. Can yes, he did. Well, good job. Should I, I have I that most stuff too? Yeah, there's one left. I know, but there's no water. They can, can get us water. water in here? They got interns here. Yeah, In hey interns. <laughs> So what, what's going on with Elon Musk and Twitter? What do you think? I, I got to say something know. first. I found something. Please. It might interest you. You guys friends with Dave Smith? Yeah. yeah. This has been making the rounds. I mean, rounds. I haven't seen him in forever, but I mean, I've, I'll always love Dave. Tweet from 2017 is making the rounds again. Oh, really? Yeah, here it is. He was a smart guy. I love he Twitter. Was. He's not dead. Oh, yeah. Why are you talking about <laughs> he's dead? You should buy it then. Is this wow. a different Dave Smith? Same. Comedian Dave Smith. Okay, because his avatar is a bald guy, and he's a yeah, good-looking... zoom in. That's not the Dave Smith we know. It buddy. said comedian Dave Smith. No, it's probably him. It's probably a joke. Ah, uh, uh, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Interns. Good now water. I... really seems to kill <laughs> Now I get why uh, Bill dude? Clinton liked him. Is that him? No, I get why Ham says he's young. <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm sure it's him. Okay. Uh, okay. It's a common name. What do we know? You should. That's true. You should buy it then. How much is it? Whoa. 2017. Dave Smith's a smart motherfucker. He knows his stuff. Is that him? Dave Smith? 
That's not him. That's not him. Uh-oh. What, what does the bio say? Host and producer. It's not uh, the Dave we It's know, not the but... name. Ah, it's not shit. the same Dave. But different Dave. I like where your head's at. Sorry, bro. Yeah. Damn. I like where your head's at a lot later. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Not even drunk yet. I wonder if ISIS ever said that. I like where your head's at. <laughs> After the old beheading. What are we doing here? Liquid IV. Concord grape. Ooh. What Concord? Just give us grape. What are we doing here? Is anyone? <laughs> is anyone being? Is anyone looking like? Man, it's not Concord. Right. Just right. Just regular grape. Yeah. We'll be okay. Well, there's white grape and then there's red grape. Juice. Why has it got to be a white grape? Just saying. All grapes matter. <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. Uh, so I, I, I sidelined us from the Elon Musk talk because oh sorry though. we're all yeah, over the road here. Yeah, you did. Elon, I, I don't know why everybody's so upset because well, I'm like we don't know what's going to happen yet. I that's, think that's the whole thing. It's like why don't we just wait and see? We don't know if he's going to make it better. We don't know if he's going to make it worse. I Can it people, get worse? I, a lot of it's funny when people are like. Why's a rich guy got to buy Twitter? And you're like, I don't think the people who own it right now are dirt poor. I don't know if you know who's running Twitter <laughs> Good point. Right now. Also, Bezos bought Washington Post. Everybody, nobody seemed to care about that. That's, I think people cared about that. Oh, did they? Okay. You know. I feel like I'm seeing more heat on the on the Twitter buy. I mean, people just need shit to be mad about. They it's really like, do. It's like, man, you know, Bezos is like thrilled because he's like, where do people bitch about me? Twitter? Cool. I'll buy it. I know. And they'll keep bitching about me? Love it. That's this great. is activity. Yes, it's more press for Twitter. This has got to be the most expensive vanity project of all time. Ooh. Like the pyramids. I don't know. Have you seen Waterworld? <laughs> Waterworld. <laughs> I actually enjoyed that movie. Dennis Hopper. But yeah, yeah, you're right. This is this is 44 Bill we're in here. 44 Bill. Just for ego. I, I mean, maybe so. he thinks he can spin this. What if he sells it for 48? Well, he's obviously a smart guy. He's got something up his up his South African sleeve, I think. I yeah, think something's dude. cooking here. What do you think? I don't know. I don't know. But he maybe he'll just buy it and burn it to the ground just to be like, hey, I own this. Yeah, I've bitch. heard that. I don't think that's a smart financial decision. No. Like, Here's forty four billion. It's probably not. But he did say he's you know how the algorithm is designed to reward hate and fighting and feuding, and he said he's gonna take that out. Which wow. is kind of nice, because I feel like this whole country hilarious. is being divided by just this. Ah, It'd be cunty. hilarious if, like, you just write, like, "Hope everyone has a great day," and you're like, "Wow, forty-five thousand retweets." This is weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That'd be nice. <laughs> but can it stand? Who knows? No, negativity wins on these god awful platforms. I think. Yeah. I mean, even if it's not outwardly negative, look what it takes off on Instagram. It's like it's not something that's like. Hope everyone has a great day. It's like a woman jiggling her tits or something. Sure. Like, well, it's not inherently good what we're doing. I mean, look, I don't hate it, but yeah, TikTok, yeah. what's popping off? It's like food and shit like that. But you mentioned a thing from TikTok earlier. What was your thing about? Uh, you said you saw something Bourdain. Yeah, it was no, a some positive. Posi some positive. I think TikTok and Instagram are more, more, more positive than Twitter for sure because I think yes. those videos will be more upbeat than just a quick. Something about brevity on that and just words. I don't know. Yeah, and it's it's very... For some reason, people with Twitter feel... It's almost if you got, like, uh, mental illness... What's the word? Uh, concentrate. You know, yeah, people are dude. somehow willing to just talk about their mental illness it's and just like let it all out. almost a concentration camp. Yeah, that that was less less mean than Twitter. <laughs> More pleasant. But yeah, it's like people just will just open up on Twitter and be like, "I think this, I think that, I'm crazy, and I'll, I'm I'm willing to show it." Yeah. Whereas in Instagram, you're like, "Oh, it's a sunset. Oh, it's a small dog or a fucking cat on a wheel." Cats on a wheel, dude. Can't beat it. Fucking love that shit. Are you pulling up Twitter porn right now? I was. All right. What Twitter's Twitter got porn? great porn. Bouncing, I will give them that. Bouncing boobs. It is weird like that you can just see like porn on Twitter. Where like I think I follow one porn star in there just because like. She followed me, and I was like, yeah, she's a famous porn star. Let me give her a follow. And then I'd be in line at the grocery store. It's like all joke, 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 and then one porn star, like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm at Gristini's. I can't do this. I'm in line. What are you doing to me? I know. When I got uh, drugged or whatever it was, the guy was my friend with me, Andrew Youngblood, was like, I'm like, Call my agent. We can't do the shows. And he took my phone, and he put it up to my face. It unlocked it. And then he's like, Okay, and porn just came up. Really? And he started laughing because that was the last thing I looked what, at. What, what genre were we doing? I think it was MILF. 
MILF is a go-to, I yeah, think. Yeah, I love MILF. Love MILF. MILFs are great. They like it. I want a woman having fun. And yeah. MILF seem to be having fun. And also, I think, like, young is just creepy to me. Like, I can't jerk off to a woman younger than me. Really? I can't. Yeah, it's weird to me. I know, but you're getting older and older, so that, that your your window is closing. I'm soon it'll be 60 and up for me. Yeah. <laughs> just got to keep it... Something creepy about young women and porn. I don't like it. Well, young... Even twenties, I don't want. I don't want nothing to do. You with You don't that. want a twenty-eight-year-old nah. porn star? Nah. Hmm. I don't mind twenty-eight. Give me someone whose dreams are completely over. That's that I seems like that. safe. I, I like that. Now that's a genre. Yeah. That doesn't Cru- have to be milf. I don't want milf. I want crushed dreams. Yeah. <laughs> I want a bag lady or a cashier or a, a you know a lady who works at a like at a no, sewage milf, plant. Milf all day for sure. All right. Milf. What is it about milf? Why do we like milfs? Well, our my mom was uh, rarely around, <laughs> so maybe that's something. <laughs> and you feel like you're giving back a little bit. Like these milfs are that's probably not what it is. They're probably out there. I don't. I don't jerk off like it's charity. Here's what I think it is. I'm never like, wait, do you have any? Do you have any UNICEF porn? <laughs> <laughs> it's not charity. I think milfs are like dudes in a way. They just want to get pounded, and we want to get laid. There's no story. There's, there's no, no bullshit. There's no bullshit. She's what a- are we? Are we dating? Is this gonna be something? Is there a future? No, we're trying to get laid. You we're almost animals. Them just like you're done. They take a puff of a cigarette. They're like, get out of here, kid. Yes! I don't have time for that shit. What milf doesn't have time for that. I no love time. that. Yeah. That's hot. They got to do the dishes. They They've gotta... got a kid to worry about. Yes. Don't have gotta... time for this bullshit. They gotta pick Go up pick up laundry. your son from soccer practice, you whore. Yes. And they want it, and you want That's it. the character I was doing. I would never speak to a woman that way. <laughs> you're pointing right at me. I but was pointing just... at you, you fucking horse <laughs> alecuse. You're, you're married to a MILF. <laughs> Wait you. a minute. Yeah, okay, dude. there you go. I mean, I, I would I just call her, you know, your wife. Stacy. Right? She's a lovely she woman. Stacey. Yeah, right. I would never call her a MILF, Mark. <laughs> is you MILF a compliment? Pig. You compliment? fucking horrible. What? No, That's, he's asking, that... is it a compliment? That's what's tough about. No, I don't think they want to be called a MILF. But you would like to you, you ever you ever speak to someone and they're like, I'm a MILF, and you're like, How old are you? Like 34, and you're like, Oh, come on. <laughs> I met MILF is supposed to be like mid forties. But if you were at your daughter's or son's elementary school picking them up and going back to your house, and a and a lady was like, Oh, Sam, Mr. Morrill, everybody thinks you're a DILF. Yeah. Wouldn't you be flattered? No, because I don't want to fuck these kids. No, no, no. The the, the teachers saying <laughs> oh, the this. The teachers? Yeah. Not the kids. I mean, these are five-year-olds I'm talking and I say, about. And everyone's saying that you're a, a one hell of a sex teacher. <laughs> I'd throw it back on them. I, I guess that, I think that's the uh, difference between men and women right there. Is a DILF is a compliment. A MILF is like, uh-oh, wh- where are we at know. here? I mean, look, any of it's like you're like, fuck, I'm old. Anything that's just saying you're going to be dead soon doesn't feel great. Well, you could be a young mom. <laughs> I'll tell you what's even worse. You say, you're a real JILF. Grandma? Yeah. Ah. But I think as a grandma, you're like, I'm still fuckable. I That's think true. I think there's a how about, how about, there. how about a gugilf? Gugilf Great is grandma. even more impressive. <laughs> Puerto Rican. We're going to get there. Yeah. <laughs> this 101-year-old grandma loves to fuck. <laughs> By the way, the oldest person on the planet just died. 118. 119. Oh, really? Well, maybe it was 118. Would you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, pull her up. Let's see. Right. Tanaka, yeah. I think it was. Yeah, yeah dude. Asian? Yeah. Yeah. Japanese, maybe. Uh oh. Is it 118 or 119? I see. She's seen some shit. There she is. Oh, yeah. There she is. 119. What was her secret to staying alive? So yeah, long? they always have good secrets. I bet. I bet. It's always some. It's always some horseshit where you're like, they're like, every day I drank bathtub gin, and you're like, I don't think that. <laughs> I think you might be an outlier. Right. I don't know if that's. I know it's all genetics, but they're like, I shot heroin in my ass every day, and you're like, oh, maybe I'll try that. Yeah. Tanaka, love. To, should we do? Let's do some news stories, man. Pull up the news, yes, sir. Let's get some fucking news stories up in this motherfucker. Hell yeah! Oh, look at you. You got your stuff. Stop looking at this. Oh, sorry. Shout okay. out to Tanaka. You'll be missed. One eighteen. Stop Asian. What's eight. the oldest you bang? One seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> it depends that. on the colostomy bag. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what's going on at that age. It's a whole. I fucked like a. Me and a friend took a couple gals home once from a playwright's tavern, and they were they were pretty. I mean, these were like. I don't know how they were. I think they got out of the asylum or whatever you call it, the old Whoa. folks' home and had a night out. But uh, 
They were old. You hooked and, up with them? Yeah, and I remember banging one, and she had this crazy vagina, and she was like, I got surgery on it for my third kid. And I was like, ah. Nice. This is some good pillow talk here. <laughs> what, uh, we uh, had a Metamucil after. What's that? Can you describe the vagina? Uh, well, I was going to town, and it felt different. Mm-hmm. It felt uh, filleted, if you yeah. will. It felt... Uh, Filet of fish. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Let's go to the news. It was strange. <laughs> I can't describe it. I was. We were both drunk. What do you got, Matt? All right. The so-called Croydon cat killer is alleged mm. to have killed and dismembered and mutilated 400 cats. Hey, we got oh, guests. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, Surprise oh guests. God. Hold. What is this, a sitcom? Are you Kramer? <laughs> you coming in? <laughs> take, take that hey. chair. Oh, we doing the, are you doing the bar? I'm the wacky bartender. Yeah. <laughs> make a drink. Is he, he's not mic? mic'd, though, Matt. We need to get him mic'd. Oh, yeah. Good point. Good point. Well, you look good, Do you want to make us You want to make us a drink up here? Uh, and we need some ice, too, then. I'll make you guys a drink. Let's do it. All, all right. right. You got the craziest jeans, DeRosa. Matt, First of need, all, we need, uh, you're 68. We need ice too. You drink every day. You eat KFC. And you look amazing. Oh, I've been on a diet. Aha. Uh-huh. I've been on a diet. I started eating, like, clean food that I make myself. And wow. I'm only drinking tequila and not drinking every day. <laughs> well done. Good for you, well, man. You That's a great. step up. It's great to see you, man. Great to see you guys. You're can glowing. We get, let's get him mic so we can get some of this stuff. This is good stuff. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. This is what this studio's turned into. It's just, uh, it's like a <laughs> hub. Yeah, well, I'll start making you guys a drink, though. Me, Please. Is there, like, rocks glasses, or is it all? We're looking well, for Well, you it. got two right there you can use. We just drank out of those. Okay, who's is who's? Yeah. I at, mean, come on. At this point, we all have... Uh, we all have HPV anyway, yeah. right? <laughs> he's getting he's the ice get there, but... Uh, sorry, he's uh, uh, he's the producer. You know what he signed up for. Yeah, yeah. We're he, talking about the, the cat killer. Oh, Okay. Yeah, so the police carried out uh, a three-year investigation into the cat killings, but have yet to make an arrest. The killings are still happening. Whoa. Damn. How many cats has he killed? It says upwards of 400 mutilated. Damn. Wow. That's Don't like, fuck with that's cats. It's like, like 3,600 cat lives right there. That's horrible. <laughs> that's that's true. What is going on? People want to kill cats. There's like yeah. a real <laughs> epidemic where people just... You know, the, the don't fuck with cats guy would put them in a bag and suck the arrow. It's evil. It's this, evil. This guy's murdered more pussy than Pete Davidson. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Am I right? All right? All right. No, that's uh, that's terrible. That's you can't you can't just kill cats. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, I that's mean, shitty. I saw the play. It was pretty rough. <laughs> but they always land on their feet. <laughs> I'll be fine. Uh oh, sorry, yeah, Matt. I- <laughs> This poor guy's working overtime because he's running a insane asylum <laughs> he's just here. Dropping he's dropping ice here. What are you doing? Everybody thinks a rehab center. Everybody thinks a drinking podcast is a good idea. <laughs> so they start producing it, and then it's like, well, dude, we, this you, guy's coming in now, being like, yeah, all right, guys. <laughs> That's great. A wacky, a wack, dude. This is the wacky neighbor. I know, right? Good to have you. And you have your own bar, and then you got to come here and sling drinks. Hey, it's all right. It's all right, you know? Check out Joey Rose's Lower East Side, Manhattan. Thank Good you. Good sandwiches. What do you guys want, a whiskey? I don't know. Whatever you... Keep whatever it going you... with whiskey, because we had a couple of whiskeys earlier. Ooh, Gentleman Jack, is that what we're doing? That's a single barrel Jack Daniels. Ooh, that's the good stuff. You can tell by the fancy bottle. Give you a little on ice. There's something floating in these glasses already. It's pretty gross. Nah, that's, yeah. that's my career. It's all <laughs> over. <laughs> floating. As soon as I find it. I don't a... know what it is, but I'm not looking forward to this drink as much as I was the earlier ones. So. Uh, <laughs> I don't blame you, dude. Look at this Mount Gay. What is that? <laughs> that's, uh, that's where Salacuse lives. <laughs> um, I don't see any tequila over here. My, I'm, uh, it's There's got to be something. Oh, here's Reposada. Hey. Come jo- sit down right there next to Salacuse after you. I am. I'm just gonna pour a drink first. What'd you do with Ari? He, this fucking kid. He left. He's like, we got to do this. We got to do that. Ari's the kind of guy that's like, do you want to hang out tomorrow? And you're like, yeah. And then you have to call him. Like, yes. So what is the plan that you have right, in mind? Right. What was your idea? So I get here. I'm walking into the studio. He's like, I'm shit faced. I'm going to get pizza. Let's wait 20 minutes before we crash. I go, no, I'm here. I'm crashing now. <laughs> I go, what? And then, and then he caught me out there. He's like, wait, 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 don't go in yet. Don't go. Uh, <laughs> I go, why do I have to go in when you go in? He's like, 
Okay, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm so- and then he went and got pizza. See, this is the part of Ari no one knows about. You know, the bathrobe, uh, shaky old man Ari. It's uh, <laughs> it's all fun and games. He's in China. He's he's uh, this is not happening. He's dosing Bert, but he's actually. <laughs> I need a break. Yeah. I can't handle it. I'm wearing a diaper. Yeah, there there you go. Go. Thank you. Go. Thank you. you. Good over here. You good? You Can sure? We, let's do another yeah. news story, man. All right, he's a right. Have another one. Sit I just want to look at these. Yeah. We have two different sets of news stories, so we're going to do one in the other app too. That's your mic right there. Oh, he mic'd me with this thing. Oh, so you're this? fine. Are we yeah. good with just that then? You like him here, Matt, or you want him on the bench? Right. Okay, the Georgia man. A Georgia man is accused of stuffing his grandmother in the freezer mm. and leaving her there to die. She wasn't dead, I guess. Wow. Robert Tincher the third told police that he heard numerous bones break when he put his 82-year-old grandma in the freezer. Whoa. Jesus Christ. Oh, Who's picking these stories? Yeah, these are, Matt, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Holy what shit. What are you doing here? That's a horrible story. <laughs> Grandmother, that's a big freezer, though. You yeah. got to hand it to this guy. Or for she's a that tiny kinda... woman. Oh, that's true. I think it's both, right? You I know, mean... you got a little grandma in a large freezer. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you it's a reaching freezer, which is a term I learned after I opened a sandwich shop. <laughs> <laughs> That's the freezer on the floor where you open the lid like a fucking Ooh. coffin. Oh, oh, I know those. That's yeah. what the guy in. Uh, did you ever see that movie with um, Jack Black, um, uh, where he kills his, where he's married to Shirley MacLaine and he kills her? No, oh, oh, that's a great movie. Yeah, the Richard Linklater movie. True right? story. Yeah, yeah. He put his wife in a in a reach-in freezer. That's right. You could like Damn. fit a body in it. And he was like, wow. everybody loved him in the neighborhood. He was like a town hero, and he yeah. turned out to be a fucking Bernie? psycho. Bernie. That's it. Yeah. Right. That's a fun Never flick. Saw it. I heard of it. Weirdly really fun, considering how dark it is. Dark. Well, there's a real guy. Ooh. Texas guy. Yeah, there you go. Damn. I think he sold cars. He, no, he ran a funeral home. Ah. Wow. He ran a funeral home, and, um, it was, weird. it was an odd it was an odd tale most of the people it's one of those movies where they do it like um docu style like mm-hmm. and they enter you know like all the scenes are cut in with interviews mm-hmm. and um actually you know you know Dudley and Bob the the radio guys in Austin yeah Dale Dudley bit. yeah yeah he's in it he's like one of the people in the interviews and I was talking to him about it and I go dude some of those people are some of the best actors I've ever seen. I was like, I don't even know who they are, but they're so real. And he was like, no, dude, those are real fucking oh, people. Oh, wow. That like knew the story and shit. He just, he goes, he just mixed it in with like actors and stuff. And he mushed Man. it in the, fr- how do you think you're going to get away with that by putting someone in a freezer? He gets away with it for a while. Yeah. Wow. Until you go in for tater tots one day and you're like, I can't take it. <laughs> right. She's hated. His wife is hated. Yeah. So like he gets away with it for oh. a while. And why is she so much older than him? That's part of the weirdness of it. He like seems gay. She was he, rich, I think. Like a, yeah, she's rich. Like it's a very strange like story. Damn. Yeah, but that was yeah. uh, Linklater's from Austin. I want to say. I believe so. Because uh, Daisy and Fuse is Austin. Mm. So He's, is Slacker, right? So is yeah. Slacker. He's all about Austin. He was on Austin before Austin was Austin. Mm. He's one of the reasons I moved to Austin. Oh, you moved to Austin? I lived there for a year. Um, when I got out of college, I studied TV production in college. <laughs> what? Yeah, and I thought I was going to do that for a living. I thought I was going to, I don't know, fucking edit or I don't know, something. Yeah. So I moved to Austin to do independent film because it was when that boom was happening. And, and the two guys out of Austin were Linkletter and Robert Rodriguez had just put out Desperado. Whoa. Whoa. Um, so I thought, oh, I'll go to Austin. And I got there and they were like, yeah, buddy, get in line. Everybody, <laughs> everybody wants to work on these movies. Still a fun town, though. I mean, for a young young DeRosa, that's a fun place to meet gals, get drunk, and eat tacos. Yeah, I had a blast. Made lifelong friends. Like, hey, there you go. Yeah, it's it's it's. <laughs> I don't regret it at all. Good but. for you. I, I commend anybody who goes somewhere in, a, in, in attempts of a dream. Yeah. You yeah. go to New York, you go to L.A., you go to Austin, you go to Chicago, whatever it is. You, you went for it. Depends yeah. on your dream. If you're well, slamming true. Women in freezers. It's a shitty dream. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad dream. That's true. <laughs> right, let's, let's... Maybe his grandma was a cunt. <laughs> All right, let's lighten the mood of this next story. <laughs> All right. A trans- Jesus, gen- a Christ, transgender man. Rikers inmate raped a female prisoner the hell while are you in doing? Wow. women's section of the jail and has been sentenced to seven more years. Ah, that's it? Yeah, seven years for... So it's a, it's a dude... Who's a, transitioned to a woman? Still has his penis, her penis, and but went to a women's prison and raped a woman. Wow! There's no good option if you're trans in prison. There's just not really a good option. Yeah. Now, 
I mean, but what's fucked up is now, like, they're, they're going to let her stay in a female prison? I know, right? Like, that's exactly the thing everybody... That, I mean, like, I get it when people are like, stop worrying about shit happening, it's not going to happen. But this is the rare case where it did happen. You got to send her now to a man's prison. But then like, she's going to get raped like crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's no win here. But here's Sam's the rule. Head. You want to you know? <laughs> wanna go to a female prison, you got to cut the dick off. That should be the rule. All right. I'm uh-huh. with that. Mark 2024. Who pays for it? The, the state? Government, the state. Okay. And we keep the dicks. <laughs> or, you gotta have a, or you got to have a chicks with dicks prison. Ooh. You got to have a section. Now that's a porn. Yeah. <laughs> I'd watch chicks it. with dicks prison. This is like Juana Man meets Oz. This is yeah. a dark. <laughs> this is a dark. Juana she goes, Oz. <laughs> she goes by Diamond Blunt. <laughs> ah, I'm sure this is a Hasidic Jew, obviously. <laughs> or an Asian. I like how they sentenced her like seven more years of raping. It's like your reward, your punishment is reward. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're back in the hen house. Jesus, this Christ. is damn good. What is this? What are y'all Single drinking? Barrel? Yeah, good Single stuff. Barrel whiskey. I don't like my the. I don't like what I poured. Sometimes a, a tequila has too much of a vanilla flavor. I, really? I agree. When that's the case, yeah. I'm we, with we, you. we might have something else. Nah, that's fine. I'm a big boy. I'll finish it. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> it's here to do a job. I mean, it's not, you know. <laughs> but this is a, it's such a happy drop in. I'm so happy to roast I you. Know. Oh, I'm happy to see you guys. Yeah. I'm thrilled. You look great. I'm thrilled. You Thank do. you. You, you do. both do as well. But and you guys never really looked bad. So, oh. Well, you're it's, one of the few guys who's down for a hang. Most people go, hey, you want to do this? And they go, I got eight shows. I got a podcast. I got a. I got to travel. And you're like, what time? <laughs> That's I love it, man. Yeah, I I, th- I always held the hang as as important as the work. Uh, here, here. Which is why you know we combine the two. Yeah, where I, ch- I, you know what though? That's what I always liked about you. You guys, like you guys, were part of a. You know, we talked about this a little bit last time when I was here, but you guys were sort of part of the class. Like I felt like right after my class, mm. like. And your class had a much more um, – i don't flipping sounds negative. I don't mean it negative. But a much more flippant approach to the worry of <laughs> like showing up. Word. Yeah, I can't think of another <laughs> word. But you weren't flipping. quite as concerned about showing yeah. up to shows like drunk and, and like having fun. Like, <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah. I envied it because when I started, like there was a lot more sober guys in squares. Right? Really? Well, dude, I came up under – Oh, well, first of all, there were sober guys. So, but you so. had the extremes. You had the, the fucking animals. You had the Attells and the Stanhopes and the Geraldos. Well, they were the they were a class ahead of us. Okay. But Attell and Stanhope and Geraldo, who I did hang out with many times, they were not the the norm. Like they were they were oh, sort of okay. the rarity. Like the and guys they were also all prolific as fuck for guys who did that. They were true. even more rare. True. They were. They were. And then also too though, the guys that I that were in the class immediately ahead of me that I looked up to, none of them drank. Patrice didn't drink. Um DePaulo didn't drink. You know, if he Nick drank, drinks. he didn't drink, but he didn't drink. You he know didn't what I mean? Go out. Colin didn't drink. Uh, had Burr. Bobby didn't drink. Mm-hmm. Burr started. Me and Burr started to drink together. Wow. But Burr would always blame me for making him drink, <laughs> which, you know, but like he was not a guy. So my point is, is like, and the guys in my cl- media class, Jay didn't really drink. Right. Uh, Marina didn't drink. Like, th- those, it was just wasn't around. And then I was always envious. Most of my hanging was done with you guys. It would be, I would hang with you guys and Soda and right. Nate. 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 Yeah. You know? And uh, I remember you like showing up to Caroline's, like oh, I'm so hungover, fuck it. Like, yeah. and I was like, man, I wish I had the balls to do that. Like, I, I, I would like hide it. <laughs> really? Oh, really? Yeah, I would always be I scared. Just couldn't. It was so bad sometimes. I couldn't hide it. Oh my god. It. Yeah, Caroline's also this. The free booze was. Uh, I know. I mean, they would make whoever was bartending. There would be like a legit like Johnny or whoever would be bartending there. Be like, oh, there's like a good bartender. I'm gonna oh, get yeah. fucked up. Oh yeah. That was the land of milk and honey. That place. Louis was the guy. Yeah. Louis was the Puerto Rican guy that bartended at oh, Caroline's. Yeah. He was sort of a stocky guy with glasses. He was really boisterous. Yes. He I would remember. spin and dance and stuff as he was making drinks. Yeah. Like he was the fucking man. Yeah, that stairwell. I used to walk down and be like, this is going to be great. It was so exciting. You were in Midtown. It was that, you yeah. know, you go into the diamonds, all different colors, and that green room. We own that place. And now I go down there, I'm like, what is this, a museum? It's a library? It's yeah. weird now. <laughs> You could smoke cigarettes in the green room yes, back then. It was yes. a fucking. It was crazy. Oh, uh, we got the we got the tail end of the of the Wild oh, West. I like, mean, we got the tail end of it. We caught the tail end of. I remember going out with a tail in the East Village. Oh, before my God. 
Like I'm, oh my god! Like just you were going into the depths of fucking hell. <laughs> like at five a.m., the last, the last remnants of like the after hours. Sure, Mars bar. And yeah. Shit. Oh my He'd like god, bang yeah. on like a sliding garage door, and they'd slide it open and let us in. <laughs> What's the password? Yeah, like wild. I'd be making out with chicks I just met, doing coke with them and shit. Uh, and it was a scene, man. It was fucking. The scene. city's losing its edge, man. Oh yeah. I was, I was coming back. I was leaving a bar, like, fucking close the bar this last weekend. It's 4 a.m., trying to get a cab. There's no fucking yellow cabs left. For some reason, it's $60 to take an Uber two miles. Yeah, so, yeah. so I'm, like, just waiting. Guys are stopping in the street. A guy goes, uh, all right, how, how far? I tell him where I'm going. He goes, it's 50 bucks. I go, that's it's two miles, dude. It's 5 a.m. He goes... He goes, he goes, fuck you, you piece of shit. And I go, <laughs> and I go, I go, fuck you. I'm hammered. I'm like, you fuck, you motherfucker. We're both going at each other. He goes, you fucking cheap piece of shit. And I was like, forty dollars. And he goes, all right, fuck you, forty dollars. As I'm getting, he goes, plus tip. I'm like, you motherfucker. <laughs> so funny, dude. Just so what'd you give him? Forty one. I wouldn't do it. Whoa! We kept fighting. Good. I kept walking. Yeah, that's a. And then off. I ended up taking an Uber for sixty-five. Ah, yeah, he showed me the principle. <laughs> I've tried to congestion fee. They call they. There's a peeve. Outrageous. They charge a congestion fee at five a.m. Outrageous. What can unless a guy had COVID? There's no fucking congestion. Yeah, what exactly. part of town were you going to? I was going to mid Upper West, mid basically Lincoln Center area, and they're fucking. And where were you? Uh, In the like the village? No, it was like. 15th Street. That's not uh, even two miles. Dude. Not even two That's miles. That's insane. Yeah, two miles exactly. You should have trained yeah. it at that point. I should have. It was I like 5 a.m. and yeah. I was fucking I wouldn't blessed. fuck around that time on the train. Not these days. Not no. these there days. was a time. <laughs> That's true. The oh, train's dude. wild now. Motherfuckers step to us on the train. Yeah, show him, Sal. Like, he's, he's got a fucking switchblade over here. Get a little, fucking, get a little pepper spray going. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah. He grew up in Brooklyn. There you go. Not fucking around anymore. Get that knife out. Don't let that Hawaiian shirt fool you. He's not easy breezy. <laughs> you see a dude in a Hawaiian shirt take a knife out, you're stepping back. Oh, yeah. You got yeah, that that's right. like Hunter, Hunter Thompson shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's awesome. True. I have a big Ooh. knife under my bed now. Like a, I have like a fucking Rambo a handle, knife. Like a, I have a Rambo knife under my bed because I was like, I need something in here in case somebody, yeah, you know, like it's fucking nuts. It's man. possible now. Yeah, it's cr- fucking wild. Yeah. Also, a good way to get rid of a lady after one night stand. Like, have you seen my knife collection? She's like, ah, <laughs> well, forget breakfast. I'm out of here. <laughs> now this city's gone down the fucking toilet. I love it still, but goddamn, what is happening? It's my favorite place on planet Earth. <laughs> like, it, I'll never. You like it like this? When it's dicey, a little Thunderdome. It's all right. I like it always. It's exciting. I feel like we're in a Grand Theft Auto video game, yeah. and it's kind of fun to see. Like, do, It does feel like you're going up against a boss every once in a while. Where you're like, this dude's fucking dangerous. Yeah. You don't know which yeah. way to go. Just as my brother were trashing the city, my brother and I are shitting on how the city's gone downhill. Right as we're saying in the West Village, we just see a dude chasing another dude with a pipe, and I was like, ah, it's yeah. kind of fun. Yeah. Keeps you, keeps you engaged. Yeah. If you got bad ADD, you a dude with a right. pipe chases you, mm-hmm. you're going to focus. You're on yeah. Your- yeah, no, I yeah. I agree. I agree. I, I I like it in all variations since I've lived here. And um I do want more than ever now, I would like to buy a place in like the stick somewhere mm. so I can go from one extreme to another yeah. when I need to. That seems fair. That's good. But that said, I can't imagine there will be a time in my life where I don't have something in this city that I'm renting or spending time here. Like, I just can't imagine it. It's the best place in the world. I say this about Austin. I say it about New York. Um, there are very few other cities I would say it about. No matter how um, uh, homogenized it becomes or or how much things go sideways or downhill, it is still light years beyond any other. Of course, city. of like, course. And I love, I love, I love Philly. There's a lot of other cities I love. Philly's great. Chicago's great. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Denver's but like fun, Austin. Yeah, it's just like this is one of those places where it's like no matter what happens, you're still. It's just the fucking best. It's the best. Man. Somebody put it I well it. when pandemic was happening. I think it was Ian Lara. And he was like, people were like, the city's changing. Everybody's moving out. It's, and he's like, New York doesn't care. It's mm. always going to be here. It's always going to be the best. It goes up, it goes down, but it's not changing. You no. know, it's the same shit. It's just, it's just, it's just New York. It really yeah. is. It's like when people say, I'm fucking out of here. It's like, yeah, New York's, it's like, we're, New York's going to be okay. It'll Even be with the office space, everyone's like, well, what about the offices? New York will find a way to survive. Trust me. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's like a part. It's, the city's like a part of nature at this point. Yes, it's like it'll it'll it's adapt. An ecosystem. Oh, the offices yeah. are going down. Guess what? Those will get turned into apartment buildings. Something right. will happen or, where or where it survives. Yeah, space, or, or like or like th- the world's first thirty six floor nightclub or something. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah. Something insane, dude. You got to go to floor thirty three. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but no, dude. That's that's. I swear to God, that's I'm not being uh, maudlin or, or poetic or anything. I I swear to you, this is true. That is the sentence that started uh, uh, me opening Joey Rose's with Paul Italia. We were sitting on his roof. We were looking at the closed buildings, and he said, "He said, Joe, mark my words. The survivors are the ones that stay. Everybody jumping ship." Forget it. Don't pay attention to that. The people that are going to survive here are the ones that stay and, and see it through. And he goes, so if you ever had an idea, now's the time. Whoa. Whoa. That was literally the sentence and Heavy. the sentiment that started it. So it's exactly what we're saying. It's like someone's saying the same thing in Ukraine right now. He's like, today's the day we open a sandwich <laughs> shop. <laughs> we need a sandwich <laughs> shop here. <laughs> that cupcake place. This is it. <laughs> Joey You're Rose's totally keys. right, dude. I love the. I can't believe I still haven't been there. We're, we're going to go. We it's gotta go. great. It's oh, so well. Time. It looks great in there. You just want it. When you get in, you just want a high life and a shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we wanted it to be. Uh, 174 Remington, folks, Tuesday through Sunday. Maybe, maybe we mend up there at some point tonight. Who the It'd hell be knows? nice. You know? I'm down. Yeah. I'm down. Um, I got 11 o'clock at the cellar. <coughs> oh, dear God. Which room? <laughs> VU. What was that sound uh, that you just sorry, made? Sorry, I, I went all over the are place. Are you a duck? <laughs> at least <laughs> <hell>. <laughs> VU's not a bad one at 11 p.m. on a Tuesday. VU's nah, fun. No, they're yeah, I like VU. I like VU. I mean, also, I like all looked, the rooms. The lighting but... looks beautiful in there now, too. It's like yeah. if you get a tape from there, you're like, this looks fucking beautiful. Yeah, it's a good, uh, it's a good, that's a great room. They're all good, but like, it hurts sometimes. You're like, I got a 1 a.m. at the Black Cat Bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough one. In between, in between setups, you just hear, I know, right? You hear a vacuum. Can you make that cocktail a little less loud, please? <laughs> I know. I'm trying to pursue my dream. <laughs> the worst is when you do the VU, you kill it, you go up to the Fat Black, which is eight feet away vertically, and you eat shit. It's the oh, same yeah. material, eating shit. Yeah, and the VU is always spitting in the Black Cat's face because you're hearing the VU music playing ah, as you're on stage at the Black Cat. So true. So the VU true. really throws its nuts around. Like, <laughs> VU is pretty epic. VU, is, yeah. VU and McDougal are the two best. Oh, yeah. They're my two favorite rooms. Can't Comedy beat solo, it, man. I actually like V and and for that run of rooms, I actually prefer Village uh, Underground, the, uh, the VU and the uh, Blackout Lounge. The lounge is good. I have grown to well, when love you're doing an the hour lounge. There is great. Oh, the hours yeah. all right. Yeah, I've really grown to love the lounge, and I love the downstairs room at the I've stand. Had so many bombs. Those are in my room, though, favorite dude. places. I, I've run. Uh, once I saw Colin Quinn would run hours there, I would always beg Liz. I, I was like, I feel like after Colin, I was one of the first guys to just beg to run hours in there. Sure. So I was like, how else am I going to write in the city? And uh, I would just bomb there so much. So I started to fucking hate the room, but it yeah. was it kept you honest. Oh, I yeah. used to bomb there until they made it a legit regular room. And then something right. in the air in there changed. When it was just a Monday night room to like do your right. what they call it? New, new jokes. jokes I, it's all by the way, shout out to Will Sylvance for starting that show. Will's been on yeah. the show before. I mean, started a show that literally was like, hey New Yorkers, fucking bring new material. Like encourage us to write. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah. Ironically yeah. all the people who need to write are never there. But <laughs> you know who you are. That is interesting, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That well. is interesting. Um, but yeah, those there's there's still some great comedy rooms in the city. Like like I lo- I like all of Gotham, but downstairs at Gotham, I love that Vintage. little room downstairs. I love it. I love Gotham. Downstairs at the stand I love. Yeah. VU Lounge. I like the cellar, don't get me wrong. I just prefer the VU and then the la- the Black Cat Lounge. Uh, I love New York Comedy Club. Oh, uh, yeah. Especially 4th Street, too. I love that yeah. room. But, uh, Killer. Yeah, both New York Comedy Club rooms are pretty... They're both kill rooms. They're great. Yeah, those are those are awesome rooms. And then after that, you know, like, Caroline's is a good headlining room. I don't fuck around. I don't go... Nah. Do you guys go to the Strip or stand in New York? I don't ever go. I don't do private man. shows. The strip, the strip really blew it because they had Adam Sandler and Jerry Seinfeld use them in their specials, and they didn't parlay that into anything. It's like people were showing up, tourists were showing up like, this is the room. Right. And they didn't parlay that. And like, yeah. I mean, I just did West Side Comedy Club, and it, it was pretty good. I was on room. Done it. If it's full, it's great. I like it. Yeah, I like and you it get too. a cool crowd. It's like that Jewy Upper West Side crowd. I love it. I like okay. that. Okay, I never did it before. It's a good layout. I opened for Bill Burr there once. It was sold out. It was bananas. But it's his people. 
All right. It was. It's a cool room. Nice. You Man. know, Gina ran it for a minute. Gina mm-hmm. said she works at the cellar now. Yeah. Well, yeah. who knows? She's all over the road. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> David Tell had the best line on her because she's worked at so many clubs. He just walked up to her and he goes, Eighth Club's the charm. <laughs> <laughs> she, she was dying. She was laughing so hard. It's like, man. That is so good. He just can't not turn out gold. He's the guy killer. cuts deep. He cuts real deep. He cuts deep. In one sentence, he'll cut you to the core. Yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ, man. Oh, my God. That's so fucking funny. So good. Holy she shit. She told it to me. I was like, God damn, that's good. That's mm-hmm. good. And it's simple. Uh, it's but it, eighth it, clubs, the ch- four words. It also shows that how aware he is. He saw her. The, oh, she worked here. She worked here. She worked here. And he put it all together and put it out in four, four words. That's love right there. Dude, yes. Burning someone like that is love. That's totally. love. That's like I'm paying attention to your life and I'm teasing you. You got that right. That is oh. love. I got a nork. I got a nork. I got. All right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, baby. That was quick. He's got uh, here. Uh, I got a Mark Norman joke. Uh-oh. Oh, I ran this by you years ago. It's just a premise, so there's no punchlines. Lay it on me, fatty. But the punchline, I mean, the premise is perfect. The impression, the cadence is perfect. I'm not going to be able to do the voice very well. All right. But this is a perfect Mark Norman bit. Premise with no punchlines. Ready? You're going to remember this, I think, when I do it. Ready? I was doing this in the shower <laughs> today. Do you want to know what I was doing in the shower earlier? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 <laughs> Premises clothes shopping. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Did you ever go to the bargain rack? Jeez, that stuff is cheap. Did you ever go to Old Navy? Whole store's the bargain rack. <laughs> Did you ever go to the bargain rack at Old Navy? You, holy hell, they're giving it away. That's not bad. That's a perfect Mark Norman premise. <laughs> There's no punchlines, as I said. I'll take it. I'll but, take it. That you, you're close. You got one line away, and that's a killer bit. There's just thank God it's the, the old Navy. You don't know the new Navy's charging. Yeah, uh-huh. you, you got to add the. I don't know how to write jokes like that. Uh, how about this? How about this? Okay, bargain rack, bargain rack. I went to the bargain rack at Old Navy. It was Old Army. <laughs> all right, all right. I don't know. I'm thinking. Out, I'm spitballing here, but I like where your head's at. All right. I yeah. saw Emmy Blotnick on stage the other day. She goes, uh, she just walked up and she's like, I don't know. I'm thinking about buying Twitter. And I was like, oh, I wish I thought of that. That's a That's great a funny line. Bit. I loved little lines like that. Did you ever see when uh, uh, Brendan Walsh used to go on stage? It worked every time. He would go on stage and he would open with, you go, Jesus Christ. You got I, I you don't know because you're in the show. Gene Hackman just died. Oh, I love his bit. Yeah, bit. and the audience would be like, Whoa. And then he'd be like, I'm just fucking with you. And then we'd get this huge laugh. Huge. I was like, and I'd be like, none of you realize how much you love Gene Hackman. Yeah. He did <laughs> yeah. on Conan. It killed on Conan. That. Yeah, Jesus Christ. And also, how the hell is Gene Hackman still? He is 90-something. He's still, still going. still going. And he, he looks just great. retired, yeah. Yeah, he doesn't act anymore, but he puts out a, a, a like a statement every few years where he's like, I'm doing good, everybody. <laughs> I just don't act anymore. <laughs> Welcome to Mooseport. Will not define my end. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. No, he's great. Gene Hackman just fucking ruled for so long. But such great movies. Oh, God. Let's French Connection? Now. Come mm-hmm. on. French Connection rules. Fucking Unforgiven, dude. Oh, Unforgiven. Yeah. Conversation. Enemy of Royal the State. Royal Tenenbaums. Tenenbaums. Heist. Enemy of the State's underrated. Mm, I never a, saw Enemy of the State. That's a good movie. Yeah. With Will Smith? Yeah. Yeah, pre-slap. He's pre-slap. sort of like uh, reprising his role from The Conversation. That yeah, role. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well done, Sally. Sally's his second buff. to last movie, I think, is Royal Tenenbaums. And his last movie is... Uh, uh, welcome to Mooseport, right? Yeah. No, Runaway Jury, jury there you go. Behind Enemy Lines. I don't know if that did well. What was Runaway Jury? He was jury? in Behind Enemy Lines. That was a John Cusack vehicle out of New Orleans. That was when Cusack was still doing like, you Drama. know, w- w- weighty stuff. Yeah. Uh, By the uh, way, he's got a great line in, uh, in Tenenbaums when Danny Glover is fucking his ex-wife. And he comes up on him, they're like, like beefing, and he goes, easy, Coltrane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love that line. <laughs> yeah, ah, yeah. That's like an tell. Yeah, no, that's that's so funny. The uh, Well, technically, his last movie is the re- release of the Richard Donner cut of Superman 2, so he went out on top. <laughs> all right, all right, there you go. <laughs> Mooseport. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lex Luthor, for Christ's sake. Yeah, I just got the box oh, set. Get Shorty was killer. This oh, that's right. This Jesus. is a really good run right here. Cage, yeah, damn. Wyatt Earp, Quick and the Dead. Come on. Uh, oh, yeah, Birdcage, right? Uh, postcards a, from the Edge. Bit of a dark period here. I'll oh, miss it, Bernie. Another Woman. That's a great Woody Allen movie. Hoosiers. 
Classic. Classic. We haven't hit, even hit his like. You rewatch that though. You're like, this white team is not winning this game. Yeah, let's yeah, be real. It's fantasy. You're doing running jump shots. This black team would fucking kill yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Come Lord on. of the Rings was easier to swallow. <laughs> That's uh-huh. so funny. The uh, the Poseidon Adventure. This guy's Young been there all. Frankenstein. Holy uh-huh. shit. That's an honor. Wait, who the hell is he in Young Frankenstein? Yeah, who is he? In I that? don't know. I mean, look it up. He's you not the. He's not the monster. Scroll up. Thank That's you. Peter Boyle. Blind? Oh, that's right. He plays the blind. Oh, yeah. Is that He's right? He's one of those few main movie stars who wasn't traditionally good looking. Too. Yes. Yeah. Like yeah. leading men types. I mean, I like, agree. like De Niro. I guess Dustin Hoffman, you could say, also is not traditionally good looking, but... True, but he's uh, cute. He's, he's a got a cute. full head of hair. He's a cute yeah. Jewish well, guy. Well, you know, he was originally, Gene Hackman was originally Mr. Robinson in The Graduate. Whoa. And he got fired because he... Uh, he, I think Dustin Hoffman, Mike Nichols played mind games with you, and and Hoffman's like, I'm gonna get fired. No, Gene Hackman's like, No, I'm gonna get fired. Mm. And he's like, No, you're. What are you talking about? You're great. And he goes, I'm too young. He's like, I'm like ten years older than you. I shouldn't be playing wow. Mr. Robinson. And Nichols was like, Get him out. And he fired him. Whoa. Wow. Mike Nichols seems like he was a dildo. He was a real dick. I think genius, yeah. but a dick. I think mm. he. Yeah, I think he was a very brilliant guy. But like, I've seen the interviews with him like later in life, and the way he was talking, I was like, Oh, I don't think I would have liked. You're him. like the original like alt comic. Like you're so sensitive <laughs> about everything. Right. The way he did that movie with Gary Shandling, where he played the uh, the alien. Remember in the '90s? Yeah. What planet are you from, dude? He wouldn't let him do like extra takes i'm like you're dealing with a fucking great comedian really yeah. and you're fucking the movie up because you're not letting him breathe interesting the movie sucks it sucks but it, i mean do you only think it could have been maybe good if it was directed maybe. by someone else I yeah don't know. well yeah or let let shanling and those guys do what they're gonna do you exactly know? i mean this is he, a great run here he has a disease Virginia that Wolf. made his hair right. uh, fall out when he was like six mike nichols so that's a piece alopecia maybe jeez better Easy. not joke about that <laughs> Yeah. Or is there another thing that's like alopecia? I don't. I thought it was something else, but it's it's a he's wearing a wig. Yeah, I mean Nichols. Who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? Did you ever see that movie? It's oh, never yeah. saw it. So hard to watch. I gotta watch yeah. it. Catch twenty two is good. Tour de Carnal force. Knowledge. Yeah, this guy's on fire. Working girl. I jerked off to that. Regarding Henry. Come Love on. regarding Henry. Birdcage. Damn, I didn't know he did primary Bird colors. Birdcage. Wit. Travolta played. Uh, oh, he did Bill closer. Clinton. That's right. Closer. Closer is fucking good. That what is that? Hot. Oh, Charlie Wilson's War. Did wow. you ever see that? I never saw it. I heard it's amazing. Oh, dude, it's it's. Do you like do you like Philip Seymour Hoffman? I love him. I, I can't believe I haven't seen it, bro. It's it it's is good. it is in my top five Hoffman performances. Oh, really? Yeah. Top three. You got to watch. What, what are the other two? Uh, Boogie, Boogie Nights. Boogie Nights and Magnolia. Uh, I would go Boogie Nights and Big Lebowski. Such a small role, though. It is. Both okay, of them are small enough. roles. Um, you know what's an underrated Hoffman performance? MI3 as a villain. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. fucking he amazing fun. in he that shit. In that. Wait, what other film? Give me the Philip Seymour Hoffman list. I want to rate. Capote? Yeah. Capote. Oh, yeah, yeah, but I, it's not a. F- I don't enjoy the film, though. Book you know is good. I mean? I, I, it's a good. good movie. I'm saying, though, like for, for my favorite Philip Seymour Hoffman performances, I'm not putting Capote in. Oh, I love uh, God's Pocket. Did you ever see that movie? Before no. the Devil Knows You're Dead? Yes, awesome one. God's Pocket. Never seen Schenectady? That's what I call my uh, yeah, I saw that one flashlight. Either. Yeah, Charlie Kaufman. My therapist loves Hoffman. that movie. God's Pocket is great. John Turturro, Philip Seymour Hoffman, and uh, Richard Jenkins. Okay. So fucking fucking love movie. Richard Jenkins. Best post 9-11 movies, 25th Hour and The Visitor. Richard Jenkins and The Visitor, amazing. Mm. Yeah. Um, For like that 9/11, post 9-11 vibe. I'm going to give, all right, my top three. I'm going to give Boogie Nights. Don't say Twister. I won't say. Oh, hey. oh shit! Oh, with the shirts, I want to get a slice. How of do we pizza. do this, Mike Wise, uh, Peters? Seat. We might be drunk. Is thrilled to welcome our new sponsor, Fanimal. I love live events. I hate buying tickets. The hidden fees suck, and coordinating with your friends is a nightmare. They're garbage. I always end up fronting a bunch of money and chasing down my friends to get reimbursed. Not me personally, because I'm very generous. Oh, yeah. But if they flake, I'm stuck with the whole bill. And then I discovered Fanable. Fanable has tickets to everything. There's no fees. The price you see is the price you pay. That's, I mean, that's pretty big, honestly. Yeah. Not only are those prices transparent, but they're almost always lower than anywhere else I look. And for any hot ticket like Coachella, a Laker game, or Dave Chappelle, Fanimal is always the cheapest option. Nobody gives, nobody goes to live events anymore. So why buy tickets alone? 
Fanimal, although if you do come to a show alone, there's nothing wrong with that, honestly. I love that. Oh, uh, someone yeah. tweeted me about that the other day. They're like, I want to, is it weird? My friends bail. Is it weird if I come alone? I said, no, dude, enjoy yourself. Yeah. And you know what? The guy made new friends at the show. There he tweeted me go. afterwards. Like, I sat with these guys and they were tweeting me too. So you end up having a great time no yes. matter what. Um, Fanimal's patenting group purchase makes it easy. First, you set a minimum size for your group and you choose the number of tickets you want to pay for yourself. Then you invite friends. When the minimum size is met, everyone gets charged and receives their ticket. If the minimum size isn't reached in time, nobody gets charged. You don't commit until your friends do. March, tell them how to... Mark, I called you March. <laughs> March, March Norman, tell them yes. how to do it. Oh, yeah. And Fanimal has amazing customer service. Don't take my word for it. Check out their hundreds of five-star reviews. The next time you need tickets, go to fanimal.com and sign up with code DRUNK for 20% of credit, $20 of credit towards your first purchase. We drink on this show. Mm -hmm. Check out Fanimal and experience more. Support the show and get $20 off your first purchase with the code DRUNK at fanimal.com, F-A-N-I-M-A-L. Dot com. Get on it. Hey, We Might Be Drunk is brought to you by Lucy. You're a responsible consumer and you want a responsible way to consume your nicotine, don't you? Well, if you're looking for nicotine gum, lozenges, or pouches to use nicotine to relax, focus, or just unwind after a long day, there's only one stop you should make. Lucy. I like this stuff. The gum tastes great. I prefer the lozenges because you can just throw them in. You're not smacking around town with the chewing. So uh, get on it. Plus, you know, it just tastes good. And it gives you a little jolt. That nicotine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It gives you a kick. If if I'm hungover, I pop one of those in and I'm like, woo-wee. Pretty good. <laughs> it's the least healthy endorsement of all time. Also, if you're going to the casino, you're hitting the slots. Just chew the gum and you, yeah. you get the same the nicotine without having to kill your lungs. So you've been looking for an alternative to smoking. Why not switch to nicotine product that can actually make you feel good and feel good about doing it? Tell them how, fatty. If you enjoy using nicotine, you should definitely check out Lucy's products at lucy.co. That's lucy.co, promo code DRUNK at checkout. Also, I have to read this disclaimer, warning this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Remember... If you're interested in a better way to use nicotine, visit lucy.co and be sure to use that promo code DRUNK. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, folks, We Might Be Drunk is brought to you by Factor. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Factor is here to give you delicious, healthy meals that are ready in minutes. With Factor, spend less time in the kitchen, more fun in the sun. It's fresh, never frozen, prepared, super good, delicious. You won't believe, and they're good for you. With 30 meals offered each week, you'll never be bored with your meal plans. Each meal arrives pre-prepared and ready to eat in two minutes. That's faster than getting a pizza. Look at all they got. They got vegan, veggie meals, low-calorie options, juices, smoothies, energy bites, plant-based bars, extra protein, and veggie size to every meal. They sent me a bunch. They were great. It's, good. Ate, it's really ate, good. It's really good. I ate one every day. I'd give them to the lady. She's a food snob. She liked it. Those smoothies are incredible. Yeah. Nice just having the house. Coconut milk. Woo. So good. good. Yeah. So uh, head to go.factor75.com slash drunk120. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so that's go.com. No, sorry. Go.factor75. Dot com slash drunk 120 to get $120 off. Damn, mm, drunk 120. It's that's good. Amazing. I really liked it. I mean, I still have a couple in my freezer just to, for you never know when you want a quick two minute uh, heat up, you know? Exactly. Yeah. So that's code drunk 120 at go.factor75.com slash drunk 120 for $120 off. Healthy eating made easy. Get on it. Buying a home is overwhelming. If meeting with realtors and endless open houses aren't enough, once you do find your dream home, you're suddenly expected to know how to navigate the mysterious world of banking bureaucracy. Uh, I mean, you know, this is a pain in the ass, the paperwork, buying a home. You know, luckily there's Mortgage CS. It works with you to find the perfect loan program for your situation. Most mortgage lenders will try to push you through the process without showing all of your options. Not Mortgage CS. Mortgage CS works for you, not the banks, and not the real estate agents. They show you a full range of options, not like those other lenders. Their top priority is earning your trust and putting your financial best interests first, not their bottom line. 
With evening and weekend availability, their service is second to none. That's why CS and Mortgage CS stands for concierge service. Visit mortgagecs.com slash comedy to schedule a call today. You can also call or text their CEO, Ben, right now. Take out your phone, dial 267-391-7425. Any time or day, any time of day or night, including weekends for the VIP treatment. Just mention the drunk sent you and he'll hook it up. Not convinced? Ooh. Google Mortgage CS and read over their 200 five-star reviews. Wow. More, this sounds pretty good. Yeah. M-O-R-T-G-A-G-E-C-S dot com slash comedy to get the concierge service you deserve. The advertisement is not commitment to lend or extend credit. Mortgage CS is an equal housing opportunity mortgage broker. All loans are subject to credit approval. Certain restrictions may apply. Company NMLS number 14... 14- Six four seven six six. Visit visit mortgagecs dot com slash comedy for more information. Nice. All right, I'm gonna say boogie nights. Um, Happiness? Nah, it's too gross. What? Uh, it's too gross. Uh, Whoa, I like that. Which one did I just say was my? Oh, oh, Charlie Wilson's War. Yep. And I might go state and Maine. As my third. Oh. I saw him when I was too young. I don't think I appreciated it enough. It's yeah. Mammoth, right? It's Ooh. heavy. It's Mammoth. Yeah. Oh, Alec Baldwin. Oh. I'm no, but it's of, Alec Baldwin's in it and stuff, right? Mr. Yeah. Ripley. Yeah, Alec Baldwin fucks 16-year-olds in it. Nice. That's like his vice. They have to keep covering it up. Now Mammoth's got a new movie it. out now, right? Who? No. Mammoth? No. No, he's got the, his play is uh, American Buffalo. I'm going Thursday night. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Going? Sam Rockwell, Paul, I mean, Whoa. and Lawrence Fishburne. I'm going Thursday night, 7 p.m. Oh, Do you want to take this chair? No, that's that's going to be amazing. Yeah, I can't okay. wait. No, no, Matt, get Sit your... Sit down. You your, need your computer. All right. Holy shit. What else is above oh, State and Maine on the IMDb? Coming. This is... Amy uh, Mann is so Mr. Fucking, Ripley. That's a good one. Oh, Punch Drunk Glove. He's great, but again, small role. Patch who? Who is Oh, along came Polly. He's crazy. Uh, he's right in that raindrops. Oh, yeah. Hold on, I gotta give along came Polly. It's props. He's amazing in that movie. <laughs> There's this scratching of his fucking back hair uh, uh, against this guy's uh, chest. Ugh, it's amazing. No, that's not him though. That's he's another. Strangers guy. with candy. Oh the yeah. The basketball with. I don't the, yeah, remember. Yeah. Oh. It's the guy they're playing against. It's not Philip Seymour Hoffman. But Philip Seymour Hoffman is equally as disgusting in that movie. Like, there yeah, he get is. that up. Yeah. 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 Right. His face was against the guy. He keeps going. He, he keeps him. going swish, and, and there none of the Rain shots man. are in. Damn, Can I say Philip Seymour Hoffman's biggest problem is is <laughs> just Rain dance. Like... Rain dance. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Actually, we're kind of in the middle of the conversation. You so. douchebags, bring your A game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing with you, Sasquatch. Oh. <laughs> <Play roll. laughs> <Play roll>. <laughs> <laughs> we all play with this dude. Is this Manhattan? Yes. Or it's supposed to be, at least. I don't know if it actually Love a ball hog who sucks. Yes. <laughs> Raindrops. Old school. What makes it even better is his form is kind of right. Yeah. And it's still right. horrible. Also, the shot they're showing is so off from the shot he takes. It's right. like a slam against the backboard. He has arc. Man, he's good. Whatever happened to him? <laughs> he didn't know that your tolerance goes down. Ah. <laughs> You got to ramp up. She was in the chess club. She was a math This is like every rom-com I in the know. 90s. That's the one. His face goes She's really that. cool. Yeah. She did this. <laughs> I used to love a rom-com. Baldwin's great in this Best too. rom-coms, DeRosa. Uh, Annie Hall. Okay. Annie Hall. The staple. The Hannah, Hannah and Her Sisters is classic. my favorite movie of all you time. You love that movie. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's a great movie. Ten Things I Hate About You. My favorite Woody Allen. Um, um. Uh, Love Actually. Jesus. Oh, right? the Brits. Along Gay Polly. What do you think? You got a few? <sighs> Anything with Drew Barrymore? High Fidelity. Yeah. High Fidelity is great. Yeah, that might be the best one, one of all time. That's a good one. The TV When Harry Met Sally is great. The TV show was awesome. Oh, oh that's, that's a good one. amazing. That's a great movie. Yeah, it's amazing. Classic shot. <laughs> that's classic. Great shot. Rom coms. What suck else? Now. They suck. They suck. Palm Springs is pretty good. That Too much bad. rom, not enough com. Right, com is out. Point. Something about Mary is technically a rom com. It's Harris. so good. That's a great movie. Yeah, oh, Wedding that's Singer. My favorite. Wedding Singer's great. Wedding Singer's a good one. You know what's a decent comedy is Saving Silverman. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. good. Yeah, yeah, I like Saving Silverman. That's fun. Yeah. 
Uh, Moonstruck, of course. Yeah. The- oh, Can't Buy Me Love. Holy wow. shit. Wow. That was great. What a premise. He goes and fucks housewives. And Say the re- anything. The remake of Can't Buy Me Love with just Nick Cannon. Just the black Can't Buy Me Love. What? Is there a remake? Yeah, Nick Cannon did it. Oh, really? Kevin Christie that. was in it. Can't Hardly Wait is a great one. Can't Hardly Wait. Never heard of Nick Cannon's that one? in it? Jew repping in the Cannon. Remake. This yeah. is crazy. I love Nick Cannon. He's right about the Jews. <laughs> Dude, the day after oh, the, girl day, next the, door day the, Ukra- the day the Ukraine war broke out, there was a picture of Nick Cannon performing at Caroline's, and I just retweeted. I was like, "Can we get some good news today?" <laughs> and he just follows me right after oh, I tweet that. I'm like, "God, oh, can't you make any jokes anymore without wow. without the wow. lead of the mass singer coming after you?" Right. That's so uh, funny, man. I'm not anti-Semitic. I follow Sam Morell. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty in pink. That. Old old John Hughes. Rom coms were great. Yeah, yeah. Pretty and Pink's a great one. There were teen rom coms. Uh, Rose Point Blank was great. That's not a rom com, though. That's just like a great movie. Some kind of wonderful Punch Drunk Love is Jerry such McGuire. a weird. Rose Point awesome Blank one. is, I like is Actually, so fucking underrated. I think yeah. I might love rom coms. Well, with all these numbers, they're with amazing, these... dude. There's some great ones. There's some bad ones. When you were an aspiring director, your first movie was always one of two things. Is the apartment? It was either a heist. Uh, it is. I guess so. That's a great it's rom-com. A fun, which one? Which one? The Apartment with Jack Lemmon. Billy Wilder Ooh. movie. I'll be honest with you. I think in its own way, The Odd Couple is a rom-com. Nah. Oh. It's a buddy movie. But That's it's a buddy movie. Yeah, but it's a buddy, buddy movie. It's a rom-com, rom-com between it's two men. Uh, Swingers is a buddy movie. Another. Love letter, I see. It's a rom-com with no penetration, Mark. Uh, uh, it's two it's guys that favorite. think they're not going to make it, making it in the end. You okay. know what I mean? Okay. Okay. But um, uh, so Hoosiers was a rom com. No, that's not a. <laughs> I don't know. Midnight Run was a rom com. Yeah. The Accused is the a great rom com. <laughs> Schindler's <laughs> List rom com. <laughs> Beverly Hills there. Cop rom com. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what were we just talking? What movie were we just talking about though? Uh, uh, so Serendipity. Many. No. Along came Polly. Uh, are, you, are you drinking straight tequila out of a martini glass? I am. It's the only one I can find at short notice. <laughs> There's many glasses up there. There's a glass, what, right uh, there. glass over there. Glass over there. I didn't see them all. all what right. kind of pizza did you get? Um, kosher pizza. Whoa. There's a kosher pizza place right around here. Oh, I was like, you're really running with this, I gotta this tell new you, man, show. It's really shitty. <laughs> yeah. Well, what is on it? There can't be meat or cheese on it. There, w- there was it's cheese, one or the other. No cheese. I mean. Oh, yeah. Right. Did you bury the plate? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I know about Jewish culture. That's only if it's non kosher. You were a uh, a Jewish Hebrew school kid, huh? Yeah, Orthodox Jewish. You, you went all in. Wow. All in. I went to a seminary. School. Yikes! Holy shit! Israel. Wow. Two years. Oh, how was made it? it? Great. Was the falafel incredible? The falafel was incredible. That's and the, the bread. There's no. Uh, it was just fresh every day. Damn. Falafel. How'd you, how'd you dodge the uh, army? Uh. Don't tell them your father's Israeli. That was the the prime directive. Do not say your dad is from Israel. They will draft you. Wow. And get out before you've been there for three years. Damn. Yeah, and claim you're a fuck. Pussy. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. I'm hungry now. I'm hungry. I kind of sure, like the uh, the mandatory too. army thing. I don't want to do it, but it's. I think it might be good for the... It the, makes everybody... Feel like you're part of the country. Exactly. In For theory, sure. it's great. In theory. In theory, communism is great. In theory. Wow, theory. Right, hey, right. in theory, comedy is great. <laughs> yeah, true. That is true. That is true. What a shit fucking gig. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're having a blast right now. We're drinking. No, this is fun. This ain't comedy. This is, this is podcasting. Uh, this is fallback plans. This is what we should have been doing the whole time. <laughs> this is just drinking with your buddies. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of which, you got a special uh, you're recording, which uh, we're all confused about. <laughs> I can explain. I know. I knew I was going to get shit for this. I knew I was going to get shit for this. But yes, I'm shooting my new hour special. I'm proud of you. In Houston at the Come and Take It Festival. Uh, uh, secret May, group. Yeah, at the Secret Group. Andrew Youngblood is the uh, venue. Joint. Yeah, Andrew May nineteenth and May twenty second, a Thursday and a Sunday, one show each night. Come on out. It's very few seats. Uh, it's uh, a 200 seater in there. Not even. The I'm main, doing, no, the I'm doing the group? small room. Oh, the I'm box. doing like the tight room. Oh, that'll 27 no seats. Yeah. It's so, going to be incredible. It's, it's Is that tight. where we did our show, Mark? Huh? Is that where we did our uh, Skankfest show? Oh, one of them. You jump around in there. No, yeah. no, no. Our pre Skankfest show. Me, you, and Shane. Is that that room? 
That's the big room. He's doing the small one. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be tight. And yeah, good. it's gonna be great. So be I'm really doing good. I'm doing Thursday, then I go to Austin and do four shows at the Creek and Cave on that Friday mm. and oh, Saturday. Nice. Then I come back to Houston and do the second taping of the special on the twenty second. So it's gonna be a weird thing, but very cool. So that yeah, that's it. New hour. It's called I Never Promised You a Rose Garden. Oh, that's nice. Joy good. Roses. Poetic. Uh, <laughs> it's about, I saw it on a book and I was like, I'm going to call my special. Uh-huh. Guy. That's got the nice negative tone. That I, like. <laughs> I never promised you a little uh, but I did give you a sandwich shop. But yeah, I'm excited. But yeah. So anyway, that's All it. All right. What, what, what got you to hunker down and go, fuck it, I'm doing an hour special? Because I, you know, I, like all of us probably, I had the skeleton of whatever the hour was before lockdown right Indeed. sure yeah. and i you know slowly started to do comedy again and and write some new things and then i went on the road and then when i went on the road i remember sitting down one day and being like all right i'm gonna go fucking crazy like i need to write like 20 new minutes to to like <laughs> fill out what this skeletal hour was sure because i'm plugging all the holes with old stuff and i had never released the other stuff so i did that and it all worked and it just congealed. And all of a sudden this hour that I was like iffy about from before the pandemic became this much more elevated thing. Nice. That I was very proud of. And I started doing it and it was just working. And I was like, I, I need to do this. I need to record this like now. Like this is because it's very like of the time. It's Hell very, yeah. you know, and that was it. What are you know? playing, Matt? I never promised you a rose garden. I never promised you. Oh, there you go. I didn't even know it was a song. What a bomb <laughs> outfit she has on. Yeah. Oh, I would wear yeah. that. Should I dress like that in the special? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I had to look at you to see if you could pull it off, but I think you can. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Look man. at those tinted Joe, glasses. Joe, guys, Who is this bitch? She's I'm sure, fucking I'm bomb. sure a lot of our listeners know Joe's stand up, <laughs> but he's, he's hilarious. He's so hilarious. Funny. Thanks, guys. I've been yeah. trying to get you in a stand up for 10 years. <laughs> The one joke I always quote Thank from you, you is, uh, I think it might have been a throwaway joke, but it was uh, everybody talking about how great uh, Europe is compared to America. Oh, they've got this. They've got that. It goes, yeah, you know what they got in Europe that we don't have in America? Ruins. <laughs> 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 Fuck Europe. There's no air conditioning. <laughs> That's great. It took uh, me a second. You guys too. are sweet. Thank you. No, we love I appreciate you, it. Thank I, you, guys. I, I love your, it. I quote your bit about uh, tolerance all the time. He's like, everybody thinks they're so tolerant, tolerant, that's big, tolerant. Uh, don't, you know? don't give it away. It's oh, okay, big, that's okay. a closer. Oh, that's, oh really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a great bit. The special. Oh, that, that, oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. All roads lead to that bit in the special. Okay. All right. Rogan's <laughs> manager, the Depression uh, album you did? The Depression, the depression auction. auction. I the depression auction. She said it was her favorite CD of all time. Rogan's manager said that? Yeah, it doesn't mean you'll be on. You won't ever be on again. But he did say <laughs> that, like, she was like, I loved it. I couldn't stop playing it. Really? I loved it so much. Yeah. Where the hell has she been? Uh, she handling died. a multi hundred million dollar <laughs> career. Are life. you still are you still smoking Marlboro Reds? Is the question. Now I quit smoking a few. Good months for ago. you. Good. 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 Yeah, I remember quit. you were. Not, it's it's always rough when you see a young guy with Marlboro Reds. I was like, never a Reds guy though. I was. I, I was a Winston's Reds guy for a minute. Winston oh, Reds. What a sh- Winston, get your head out of your ass, Winston's. I was smoking Fuck Winston's off. for a while. You're not better than us. <laughs> <laughs> Winston's are trash. What are you talking about? No. Sounds classy, though. Yeah, it does. No, awesome. Winston's? I don't know. No, <laughs> pull up Winston's. Winston's cigarette. is a cigarette that you pack a, no, on the back of a Ari, slave. Those are Winston's. <laughs> These are not classy uh, cigarettes. What am I thinking That's of? That's a good looking box. <laughs> You're thinking of like Dunhill's. Yeah, yeah Dunhill's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dunhill's are classy. Yeah, yeah Winston's are like Winston cowboy below. cigarettes. You're right. I'll take it back. Yeah. I'll take really? it back. Really? <laughs> Yeah, Winston's are Winston's a, Winston sounds like a waspy name, though it still sounds classy. Winston, yeah. it sounds like you're a butler. You know, yeah. Winston. Well, you know who smoked Winston's? Who? You know who smoked Winston's? Who? And I know because I knew his daughter for a while. I was friends with his daughter. Uh, Josh Brolin smoked Winston's. Whoa. That kind of guy. That's the kind of guy that smokes Winston's. But he's a nice like a grizzled yeah. piece of meat. He's, yeah, <laughs> I love that guy. You know, that's a fucking man. Dude, ever yeah, since yeah, Goonies, yeah, yeah. that guy's fucking rock. I knew his daughter. Yeah. His daughter was cool. Huh? Yeah, she, she worked cool. at the stand for yeah, a Eden. She's the best. She's so She's fucking awesome. cool. Yeah. Super cool. cool. He yeah. was like he was in the double Marvel thing where he was Thanos, but then he was also the bad guy in uh Deadpool. Yeah, he wow. was uh, interesting. There he is. I had video. I never met the him for guy. as long as oh, I was friends yeah. with uh, Eden. I never met him, but Eden used to watch my dog when I lived in L.A. because we were friends. She would do me the favor, and one day. 
I was somewhere and she was taking care of my dog and she started sending me all these videos and it was Josh Brolin playing with my dog. And I was Whoa. like, fuck. The fucking dog is He's like just spreading peanut butter on his nuts. Yeah. You're like, Jesus. He, he was at the stand once just hanging out and yeah. I went up to him and I was like, hey, and I bombed horribly. And I, I was like, ah, about that show, huh? And he was like, Get away from me. Yeah. Wow. I bombed horribly. You, fuck, with... you fucked it with Brolin? I tried. I tried. He gave me the, the wave away. It's funny because Brolin's not anyone we any of us dream about talking to, but when he's there, it's like, oh, cool. Oh, yeah. yeah he's no awesome, country, man. man. Yeah. Dude, His I was there one night. in Streisand. Look at him uh, there with Sean Penn. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's oh, very James right. Brolin. Yeah, yeah, right. wow. I could have said married instead of banging. Yeah. That would have been nicer. Amityville Horror. James Brolin. I mean, that's that guy's a legend. Mom. Dude, look up no. James Brolin's hair now. It's insane. Great right head of hair. What's it called? Um, I was there one night, terrible crowd. Oh, my God. In the back of the room, Edie Falco. Whoa. Oh, wow. I went on stage, had a decent set, but the one who was carrying it was Edie Falco. Whoa. She was, she was like, oh. yeah, she was like really laughing. I was like, that, that lady is awesome. She like, gets it. She gets like what we're all fucking going through right now. I mean, it was a rough fucking crowd. That's, that's the only person. When you see her in the crowd, that's like that's the only person I care about. God, Can, yeah. Isn't it funny when you see she was one awesome. celebrity in the crowd? Venus uh, Williams was in the audience once at the Village Underground, and you could just like everybody was like looking to their left the whole time. Of Is course, she laughed. Was she having fun? She was having a blast. That's Venus awesome. Williams really? was. Yeah. Wow, Robert having Compton. a blast. That's awesome. Compton, like Snoop. Look at yeah. Josh Brolin. He looks like Alan Havy. Or Look at that <laughs> hair, dude. Tell me that hair is not insane. You only got Barbara Streisand because he looks like he's a good 401k. Barbara looks like Ron Perlman. <laughs> Barbara's not <laughs> I love when people try to tell you a young Barbara Stanson was hot. You're like, fuck. Yeah, she had you. moments. She was she had hot. Moments. You. She had she clear had skin. Moments. That's it. She looked like a fucking big nose she honker. Had, I love I remember the nose. I, I love what the, the eyes. fuck? I remember this is the asked. one clip that's going to get pulled from this podcast. Look at that. Ari calling yeah, Barbara was, Streisand a big nose honker. Look at that. God damn it. She's pointing where she's headed. She she's does cute. look like Ari. In Ari's I defense, know, she looks like Ari. Guess what? She does. I would fuck a young Ari Shafir. But he had a career. How weird is this? How fucking weird is this? I remember talking. I would say if I fuck Barbara Streisand, this is not happening. <laughs> <laughs> I, remember t- I remember I asked Eden once about it. I was like, Eden, it's kind of weird. Like, I just realized this. Your grandma is kind of Barbara Streisand. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and I was like, not. I know she's not like your like by blood no. grandma, but she's like your grandma by marriage. And I was like, is that weird? And she's like, well, you know, it's me. She's just Barbara. And I was Whoa, like, yeah, she's like, God, it's like. She's gross. Even as many famous people as we've all met, you can't wrap your head. I can't wrap my head around. It. Of course, of Who's course. Who's the weirdest person in the crowd where you're like, "Fuck, this messed me up." Uh, I had the lady from CSI in the crowd. What's her name? Which one? You know her, the the CSI gal. She's, she's kind of milfy. Uh, she's she's older. She's pretty. Abby Crutchfield. <laughs> no, that's a comedian. The about? lesbian one. <laughs> CSI lady. CSI where? CSI where? The Susan Sarandon. The man, that's her, the first one. What's her name? Marge. Marge Helgenberger. Oh, I thought she was more famous. Elizabeth Shue? Marge Helgenberger. Elizabeth Shue, dude. I wouldn't even know who that lady was if I met her. <laughs> I saw her that she was glowing. She was in the crowd at, at uh, Jack, John Franklin's, Joe Franklin's. Oh Look at man, her. remember that fucking she's disaster of a, sh- of a show? That's yeah. a bad pick. Joe Give Franklin? me a good pick. Yeah, yeah. she's she's Sorry. clearly Not attractive. Great. I'm just we had one night in the belly room. You've done you've done four hundred thousand shows. This is your this is the <laughs> okay. Name. Well, I did the Patrice benefit, and Adam Driver was in the front row. And oh, that was, wow. was he laughing? Yeah, he was awesome. Wow. One, one night in the belly room, John Bon Jovi was there with the guy from True Crime. What's his name? True Detective, the the main one, the Woody? McConaughey. What McConaughey? Oh, McConaughey wow. was bombed, heckling everybody. Oh, no. We'd all finish our sets. So but like, like fun or no? Not fun. Okay. Go to the green room. John Bon Jovi would come back. Go. I'm really <laughs> sorry for my friend. I really apologize. Wow. One after another, he would come out and apologize for wow. McConaughey for being bombed. <laughs> yeah. I, I fucking bombed. This is my worst one. I bombed at the Boston Comedy Club in front of Inspector Deck from Wu Tang Clan, and, oh, he's, oh, and he's my favorite Wu Tang member. Oh, that's that's your favorite. Is your favorite? I, I turned to him in the middle. Of my you contrarian fuck, Joe. No, I love Inspector Deck. He he's awesome. He is. He's awesome. Duh, Joe will always be like, "What's a non-obvious choice?" No, that's no, it's. Inspector Deck is awesome, and we'll go. He's we'll great, go but I'm just saying. Like, Rizza, Jizza, Ghostface—that's who you go Deck, with. Deck, Lizza, Lizza. In my opinion.
Canyon, Berries, everybody. Really? The the only comparable. I love the entire Wu Tang Clan. Do not. I'm not shitting on anybody. Totally. The no, only comparable lyricist of Wu Tang is Method Man. To, to really. Dick. To, in my opinion, he's I that. Gotta, I gotta, maybe I don't know enough about Joe him. Joe likes I, the new Star Wars more than the old Star Wars. <laughs> Do you? Deck is Deck is Triumph, Abomatomically. Like that's the most famous Wu Tang verse ever. Oh, that's him. Yeah, that's okay, Inspector that's really Deck. Good. Okay. Anyway, he was in the crowd. I was bombing so fucking bad. Oh, this is very familiar. Yeah, this is no. You know the, all the songs from Wu Tang. This is the big one. M e t h o d is the big one. This is pretty hard though. Yeah. All right, cut it. We gotta we gotta pay for royalties. The, uh, <laughs> I was bombing so bad that I turned him in the middle of my set and I go, Deck, I don't know what to tell you. Man. <laughs> wow. wow. And he left, I believe, during my set. Oh. This guy's gonna talk to me afterwards. I don't want to be here. Yeah, good save. Shit. Damn. Yeah, Wu Tang. That's crazy. Yikes. Hey guys, where can people get these shirts? <laughs> we might be drunkpod.com. You Those got are, that right. And we got the glasses you like. Dude, I remember I was in Tampa once middling and this is years ago. And side uh, splitters? Yeah, and Chris Jericho is in the crowd. No. The wrestler. Mm. Isn't he and, the one that killed his wife? No, it's Chris Benoit. That would have been a better story. He, he was the man. That would have been a much better if, story. If Sam was like, do something about your life. This motherfucker's <laughs> going to kill his wife or some shit. He's got bad energy. No, uh, no uh, Chris, ben, uh, Chris Jericho was hammered. And years later, he did my MSG show. He's cool as fuck. Oh, yeah, really yeah, nice I'm guy. Cool but he was wrecked during the show. And I was like, he's going to fucking ruin my set. Like, I think he's going to. He's so drunk. He's laughing so loud that it's like, rah, rah, rah. I'm like, I I can't not address uh, this. But I don't want to address it because I'm a fan. This is weird. Right. And he, it, I got off just as it was about to turn. And oh. I was like, thank God. <laughs> Who headlined? I, uh, a guy named Tim Wilkins. Oh. I remember, wait, I've heard of him. Really good dude. I, I mean, it was so many years ago. He crushed. I mean, it was yeah, like those road headliners, road like headliner. BC room headliners, and you're Murders. like happy to feature for them. Murder. And you're not featuring for them. You're and then the awesome. I remember I was staying in the condo. He would like come by to check on me. He would just be like, "How are you?" He would just hang. Wow. Wow. He was an awesome guy. And uh, who's Tim Wilkins? Yeah, and he. Uh, yeah, and I remember getting off, being like, "Thank fucking god." Yeah, and he he was. He kind of came out at the end just stumbling. It was cool as fuck. Wow. Oh, there he is. I don't know. Is that him? Yeah, that's mm. him. Oh, wow. It's How amazing those B-level headliners that were like pretty much all really cool. Oh, he was I awesome. Know. They might I have a them. bit of an alcohol problem. Wouldn't I don't think he room, drank. I like, think it was just, you know. But like they were all pretty fucking respectful and like, hey, let me give you a little bit of advice, but otherwise do your own thing. Yeah. He told me a great story. Actually, I remember he told me uh, he opened for Geraldo. Many years ago. Jim Geraldo or Greg? Greg. Okay. Greg. Geraldo Rivera. He, he <laughs> featured for Geraldo Rivera. And he said, Geraldo just tore his act apart. And it fucking made him go, the, made him like work his ass Whoa. way harder. It was like, man, it was like the best thing anyone ever did for me. And you're like, man, it's crazy. The hazing back. Not, I don't even want to oh, call sorry. it hazing, but I remember uh, <laughs> Jesse sorry. Joyce telling me a story about uh, one time Geraldo goes, what's up with your shoe? Let me see your shoe. And they were on the balcony of a, of a hotel, and Geraldo just threw it over the balcony. Oh, and Jesse so. was like, all right, and it landed in the pool. And it's like, God, I'm the opener. It. That's what you do. It's so funny because like this is funny. It's like, but actually I have no way to get home now. <laughs> yeah, there's I a lot of that. I get how it's funny. And but that... Yeah, and that's also one it's of those funny. Jokes but now I have to like, go to the airport with one shoe. Yeah, if you do that joke to somebody, you have to be like, "I'm, I'm gonna buy a new." Let shoe. me buy a new I shoe right so. now. Yeah, like so. that's that's a real like. Come on, dude, it's my fucking shoe. Even the slapping that this is a very New York thing is slapping the food out of someone's hand onto the floor. That was big. It's big, but also it's like fuck. But it's like, oh, if you can't afford a slice of pizza, like here's five bucks, go get it yourself, bitch. But it's at least like I'm not out money. Right. I would never do it to a young kid that couldn't afford it. You'd I would only do it money. to like you, yeah. like a friend or with like me. You wouldn't have to give me the money with yeah. a young guy. You'd have to give them. I would only do it to a close personal friend. Right. I would only yeah. ruin there. I would only ruin there. Funny. Night. Could you? I mean, do it like I did it to Voss in Austin, and I was and he, we were both <laughs> laughing so fucking hard. You know what I mean? Like it's funny yeah. when you're. No, I remember Bobby just stuck. I forgot who it was. He just took his finger and stuck it in their drink, and I was like, "Just so fucking uh, disgusting." I saw Patricia at the Jason Andor's. We went to Jay's christening yeah. at the comic strip. Classy guy. The <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who's christening? To Isabella's christening at the comic. Jay got strip. his kid ordained by God. 
at the comic strip. Oh my god! What a I heard he got bumped loser. by Seinfeld. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. ten minutes more. She'll still be. He got price. bumped by Seinfeld's abortion. <laughs> He's Jewish. <laughs> the uh, no, but uh, he uh, so um, they, we we all went and uh, Jason Andors took got the last piece of cake and Patrice go, and it was free cake. Like who cares? Yes. But Patrice goes. Is this your cake? Is that good? And uh, stuck his finger yeah. down into it. And Jason Andrews was so mad he was going to hit Patrice. That's the best. He was so mad. And I was like, Jason, it's like free baptism cake. Like, who gives a shit? <laughs> if yeah. you're mad enough to strike someone, you've done the right thing <laughs> right. by getting them that mad. It's pretty soul crushing, though. I was at uh, Moon Tower years ago, or maybe South By, and I was looking at my notes and I had all my jokes, and Bobby Kelly swatted them all, and they all went, all went scattered. And I was like, fuck. This sucks. Older comic can't do shit. Can't do shit. Make sure it's someone you're friendly. At least Bobby, you're friendly with. I had a guy do that to me once. Who I like. It was like a comic I didn't really respect, and I wasn't close to. And he just smacked the notes out of my hands. I was like, I don't even know you, dude. That's you like gotta a know. You gotta lane. know where you are with the yeah. relationship to ball bust. Dude, I in L. A. When I first moved to L. A. And man, he got like legitimately mad at me. I was at a I was at a party at UCB for something, and okay. I was talking to Kamal Nanjiani. Mm-hmm. It was before he was famous. And uh, he was a fun guy. He, he drank, <laughs> yeah. And uh, he had a book. He had like a notebook with him, like a little notebook. I guess he was doing a set earlier. And I go, "Hey, can I see that?" And he handed it to me, and I threw it across the room. And he goes, "He goes, go pick that up right now." <laughs> go, I love the line of the sand. Yeah, dude, he got dead serious, and he goes, "Go pick that up right." And I go, "No." Ah. And he goes, "Go pick." It. I go, "I'm not picking it up. That's the joke. I'm gonna, f- I'm gonna fuck you. I'm not picking it up." And a girl that worked at UCB. Like saw it happen and went over and grabbed it and came back and handed it to him and she turns to me and she goes real mature oh, and walked that's away. The end of like, comedy. No, I'm a comedian. I'm not mature. And I was like, <laughs> guys, it was a joke. Like Jesus Christ. And he was like legitimately like mad at that's me for so it. Funny. Get on all fours and get it with your mouth, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> In my cast in Pakistan. That is the biggest insult you can do. Damn. <laughs> That's hilarious. Joe yeah, is also one of those. Kumail funny. always said really. I thought Kumail's stand-up was really funny. Back he is. In the day. He's yeah, hilarious. Great stand-up. And he was yeah. fun when he, when he he was a fun guy to drink. He I'm not knocking him as too. a dude. but he No, no, not at all. Real I'm man. just saying. And I he is it. the guy to go to on advice for steroid use. <laughs> he shredded. He, he, shredded. Shredded. he looks shredded. insane. If you need to What's know what it's like to be in a Marvel movie or yeah. how to take steroids, <laughs> That's he is your guy. <laughs> I love when he like showed his new body. He's like, listen, you got to be a dietitian and 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 uh, work out. I'm like, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. some people just don't and. fuck with that. I saw Ted Alexandra once when I was brand new. I was at the Damn. cellar eating, and I saw Ted sitting next to Patrice and a couple other guys, and he was wearing a weird sweater, and they all went to town on his sweater, and he goes, eh, and he got up and changed seats. He like, didn't oh, like it. I didn't know we could do that. Like I didn't know that was part of it. Opt we out. Opt out and move. Um, wow. At least, here's the thing. At least Ted, though, just was like, eh, it's not for me. Yeah, he, he, yeah. Had to, he, go, he didn't go ballistic. I had, no. uh, I, had yeah, I, I don't want to name names because I like the guy, but a guy. Harvey Weinstein. We were making, we were at it. I was at a table with Keith and Norton, and and there was another, it was at the cellar, and then there was another table of comics who Cosby. all worked there. And me and Keith were like making fun of their table. And I very loudly was like, ah, your table stinks. This is the better table, you know, whatever, <laughs> dumb, stupid shit. Yeah. And this comic um, got up to go do his set and leaned into my ear on the way downstairs and goes, you feel like a fucking big man now because you made fun of me? <laughs> it's all your fucking comedy friends because you'll do anything to be liked, right? You'll do anything to be Whoa. fucking liked. We walked downstairs and I was like, what the fuck, dude? And then he came up to me later and he's like, dude, I'm sorry about that. I was just, I'm, I'm not in a good mood. And I was like, yeah, no shit, dude. Like, <laughs> wow. Jesus dude, comics do that a lot. Whoa. A lot of comics. Are, I've had a lot of comics lose their shit on me and then the next day be like, that was really uncool. And I'm like, yeah, thank God I'm in therapy, and I'm not fucking crazy like you two, or we would have been fucking throwing fists. It is the yeah. best when a comic goes to you about, hey, I was way out of line, I'm sorry. And you're like, okay, great. It's it's over. Thank yeah, you. You're like, thank yeah. God you I caught that. It. I didn't spill right. it. I didn't spill it. You wanted me to spill it, but I didn't spill it. I didn't spill it. I had a comic get in my face like a week ago and like basically say, like, let's fucking go. Let's fucking Ew. fight. I can't say uh, his name. Wait, can we mute it? Can you mute it? I'll say it after. <laughs> mute the mic. Just, just okay. like you want to say and yours, I'll, we'll say both after. Judy Gold wanted to fight. <laughs> and they're like, Judy, I'll fu- let's fucking go. It's 50 50. It's 60 40, you'd win. I don't know. I'm think i going to flip it in her favor. I forgot so fast. 
that I made a roll that I didn't you want did to say. Exact my exact thing. I was like, who was it, Sam? Uh, no, I, I don't want to throw his name under the like bus. That. But it was it was literally a week ago, and he was like, let's fucking. Uh, let's, he got in my face. He was like, oh, fuck, let's fucking go. And I was like, wow, am I gonna have to fight this? Like, I'm gonna get my ass kicked. This sucks. By the way, and, the guy that does that is never the guy you think it's gonna be. No, you yeah. would think in your head you go, Louis Gomez. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> it's like, no, it wasn't Louis. No, Louis is Louis actually you. laughed Lewis really is hard. Protecting you. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I mean, I remember one time Mark and I were at CBs and some guy's screaming at Mark. It's Mark is we're all bombing. Mark is kind of you remember that at CBS yeah, Comedy of course, of and course. Mark can't get shit because the crowd's horrible and one guy keeps heckling him and Lewis gets in the guy's face and goes pussy pussy and the guy's like ah and yeah. Lewis goes you and me outside right now and he drags the guy outside in front of his girlfriend and he goes pussy and the guy's like ah and he goes you fucking bitch he just humiliates him in front of, and I was kind of like I'm really glad that guy's on our side. Yeah, Gotta love is. that you have an yeah, Italian bomb on your side Puerto Puerto at all times. Stick. That's amazing. But anyway, this guy gets in my face. He's trying to like fight. And I'm just like, hey, man, let's calm down. It's not a big deal. And he was yeah. like, it is a big fucking deal. We go outside. I have to wait. And I'm like, let's talk it out. And after like 20 minutes, he goes, I was way out of line. You're right. I'm That's really good. Sorry. That's rare. It's That's so rare big that to be able that. to say that. I was wrong That's and big. I'm sorry. That's big. I, I got like, off stage once. This is a work environment. This is the fucking I hood. Know. Oh, exactly. It was Joe Mackey, wasn't it? <laughs> Joe Mackey. Dude, I was setting up my camera once to film my set. I had to make a tape for somebody. And, I, and Steve Byrne was on stage. I'm only saying this because he handled it right. But like, I was- Steve Byrne. Yeah, Steve Byrne. Great guy. I love Steve. And, and Level-headed guy. Sweet yeah, guy. Yeah. yeah. And I was like setting it. And I was like, all right, let me press record. Waiting for him to finish. He already has the light. And then he gets off. He's like, who the fuck is filming me? And he grabs my camera. I'm like, it's me. I'm on next. I'm on next. He goes, I would never do that to you. I wouldn't. I'm, like, I'm not doing anything. I'm sitting on my camera. Wow. And then like I did my set. Couldn't tape it. And then afterwards, I go, hey, man, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, all right, thank that. you. Yeah. Good. Immediately ready to be like, I thought, I'm sorry. I thought it was something that, other than it was. <laughs> Yeah, like, well, I really like, regret you po posting this meltdown of yours a second right, ago. Right. <laughs> you so came off crazy. Amazing. Comedians might be a little unhinged. unhinged. A, little yeah. a little irrational. Not, as long as they erratic. come to the conclusion later and you're like, hey, just watch it next time. Give it like, give it a minute before you swing on me next time. Yeah. Like, hey, we're friends. We're fuck That's the thing. I had to tell this guy. I was like, you consider me your friend? He goes, yeah. I was like, then don't try to fucking fight me. I know. I saw Rogan do this one. Somebody goes, uh, hey, uh, Duck Stanhope has the same bit as you. I think he stole it. And Joe just goes, no. <laughs> oh. Goes, well, I think he's like, no. That's he's like, good. you're not going to convince me Duck Stanhope is suddenly a thief. Because no. that's what they want. They want you to get worked up and go fight yeah. somebody. Because I don't know the situation. Yeah. You're wrong. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Gross. By the way, it's like. There's a million fucking. We're all gonna land on the same shit sometimes. Let's yeah. not fight. I know. I got a week after the Chris Rock slap. Yeah, they bait it. They love. It. They're like we're action figures. And uh, I somebody tweeted like, "Hey Hannibal, Norman's talking shit." Because I got drunk with Hannibal. And we I told a story about it, and he listened to it, and he was like, "Shut up, fuck you." And I was like, "Thank God." He listened to it, it's too. Yeah, I just like, outright go nah. Yeah, the way these dumb. Dicks that that do nothing except write to people on the internet. They trying don't trying to start shit. Yeah, try to start shit. They don't create Respect anything. It, they just listen right. and, and and try to start shit. Yeah, they're they're. Mm hmm. Seems like maybe theft has happened here. It's like it sounds like a conspiracy theorist trying to connect dots. Like yeah. it's like I know this but, is. Uh, it's the, so the problem is they never retract. They like, never retract. I had a guy go. Oh, you stole this joke from Mulaney. And I'm like, uh, I don't know, maybe it's uh, he's got a similar joke. And I looked it up. Mine was from 2011. His was from 2015. So I write him that, and he never wrote back. Yeah. So uh, how Adrian, about you go, hey, you're not a thief. Adrian uh, had one. Like, you stole this from Bobby, Bobby Lee off a podcast. And she's like, well, mine was on the David Letterman show, <laughs> which is not around <laughs> anymore. Uh, so it was nine years before this. Right. So you think, yeah. I stole it. So now... Go accuse him. I heard exactly. Bobby, Lee, Bobby Lee did his on Tom Snyder. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was Jack a good. Parr. That was a like a lost show. <laughs> right. I got it. I got it. I got into it. I am embarrassed that I even responded, but I got into it with a guy this morning because this morning you can't do it. You can't do it. <laughs> I but, woke but up. I get it. Yeah, I woke I up and mentions. I was just making coffee and looking at my Ready phone and I see this tweet and the guy's <laughs> like. The guy's like, you know, can somebody please replace DeRosa on Taste Buds? <laughs> what? It's your show. I know. He doesn't know. You He's guys like, are gold together. Thank you. It's, it's a gold. great show. Gold. Thank you. It's, it's Thank the you. perfect pairing. It's Thank the, you. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, he doesn't understand when he's being an asshole to everybody. Like, whatever. But he listens. Yeah. And I wrote back and he's I was just like, I just, at first I was a dick and I was just like, 
you don't get it. It's above your head. Like, there's plenty of lowbrow entertainment out there for you, whatever. <laughs> and then he's like, you're a fucking hack. Like, da 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 da. Wow. And then I wrote back and I go, listen, man. I'm paraphrasing, but I go, listen. I'm actually going to try cunt. to talk to you as a human being right now. That's fun. Why do you listen to a show that you hate 50% of? It doesn't make any sense. I just don't understand. Uh, I'm really point. asking you good why. Point. This is self-torture. And I go, it would be like watching the Marvel movies just for the Thor scenes. Mm. If you, But you mm. hate the Avengers. I was like, right. there are other avenues to get your Sal fixed. Good is point. my point. A lot of avenues. Right? And, uh, and he was like... You Oh, Joe, I'm not talking about your show, Simple Joe. You're so dumb. I'm talking about you, you fucking hack. Da, 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 da. And I go, no, dude, I'm trying to talk to you like a human being right now. Well, the problem is you can't. I mean, the problem yeah, is you're, you're, and then, well, exactly. these people have too much access to you where it's like back in the day, you would just hate a guy and just be like, that. I don't like that guy. Right. Now it's or like, hey, I don't like you. And we're like. Oh, why don't you? We can't even entertain that so, shit. So exactly, and then like I have a bit, I have a bit about this in the, in my new hour, and I, I finally just said to him, like I just go, you know what, dude? I tried to talk to you like a person. I go, you have borderline personality disorder. <laughs> there's something wrong with you. Like you should try to talk You're to diagnosing somebody. your followers. Yeah, I go. There's something yeah. wrong with you that you feel the need to be mean like this. Yeah, that yeah, like, you get enjoyment yeah, out of it. Public, this is what it's called. You should find help. I, I hope you happiness or whatever. And he's like, oh, simple Joe, you fucking hacked it. And I go, no, dude, I'm serious. Like, I oh. hope you find joy in your life. Like, you're, you're, there's something wrong with you. Yeah. And then he kept doing it. And I go, look, he dude. Would, I, he's not going to let go. He's not going to like, well. You're just like, right. yeah. And you're just like, what in the fuck is wrong? Like, I'm like, and I just finally, I go, I've spent too much of my time on this, dude. Uh, I'll see you later. Like, yeah. whatever. But it's so not, it's this like. Is why, this is why Metzger said he like prefers Facebook over Twitter. Because he goes, on Twitter, you write a joke. Someone else comes in and goes, um, hey, you suck, whatever. Right. And he goes, they're spatially, they're equal. You write a tweet, he writes a tweet. He goes, on Facebook, you write a tweet, and then they have this itty-bitty little line at the bottom, which right. is way smaller because that's where you belong. Right. You're nothing compared to the fucking artist right. who's doing it. Right. Mm. That's why I like Sam Morrill. That's true. No names, but plenty of times at the back table, <laughs> Sam Morrill, and drunk or not, will go, hey, I don't like you. Go away. <laughs> and you're I'm like, you're not it. doing it online. I you're love, doing it man to man. I love that you did. I didn't know you did that. I love uh, that. Occasionally. Occasionally. If, if, if very someone's rarely. horrible. It's, it's got, someone's got to be horrible. And folks, this it. is to the booker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome that you do that. Seriously. Uh, it's very rare. You got to really, you got to really push me. But then they go online and blah, blah, blah. That's on them. That's, that's on, on them. them. Sam exactly. handles it the right way. Go yeah. away. Get the fuck away from me. I don't I, care you just for you. Can't, you, know, look, you can't respond to people. You can't. Nah, you, nah. you just can't. I'll, I, I never look. I never look at the. I really. If I look, I looked at the Simon Rex comments on that episode because every comment, every message I got was like, my, I love this episode. So I was like, all right, let me look. So I looked at those comments. They were so positive. I almost never look at comments. What well, were yeah. the Simon Re we we Simon did this episode and people loved it. it. He killed killed everyone it. Everyone loved it. He, he seems just like a really clips. nice guy. Really I love him. Clips. He's a mensch and he's like he's got mensch. amazing stories and he oh, just great. he also listens to this so he just came with like he was like so prepared. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. He killed it. But so much better than you guys. <laughs> really. <laughs> I rarely I rarely look at comment comments or not cuz if they're, they're good you don't you. believe they're them and if they're bad they make you feel bad. No, it's bad. So that's the problem is like the good ones, you're like, well, that's not real. And the bad ones bring you down. Jay it's said so it the best. It was the comments are people who are fan, like Stern comments. He goes, they're, they're for Stern. They're, they're going to watch every episode. And they go, I hated this episode. They're not hoping Stern watches this. They're, they're just talking to each other. Right. They're, wa they're fans. They're watching every episode. And the people who like it aren't writing. Right. No one's like, I love this. Yeah. Uh, I love this. Uh, this episode. Whatever. They just, they just go, I hate this, and they move on. They're not yeah. the, the good guys. Aren't writing. Yeah. And also, like, guess what, man? It's a free show. You're gonna like some episodes. Enjoy You're not gonna like others. We're doing our best. We want this to be a show that people that's like. Why, but... that, yeah, that's why I like the Edinburgh Free Fringe, because people are like this sucks. They're like, just leave. You've paid nothing. Take off. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah. Do. And it's the same to a podcast. It's like I've I've said that to certain fans where they bitch. I go, oh, I'm sorry that we're giving you free entertainment every week. Go fuck off. Then. Yeah, I wish I could be like, like you don't what get do you to want? Watch like, 
too many ads. It's free, you fucking twat. Yeah, go pay five bucks yeah. a month for Peacock, motherfucker. Yeah. Right. Like, fuck off, man. Yeah. Uh, the uh, yeah, yeah. All you're hearing now it, online is you can affect comedians if you write. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you simple. message, me, yeah. everyone message Joe, simple Joe, right? Yeah. Simple, <laughs> simple Joe. Oh, oh simple, simple Joe. Joe. Oh, I was drunk oh, when simple. I wrote that. By the way. <laughs> simple Joe. <laughs> This is, this is, this I episode. am simple. I'm a a simple drop way. in from Simple Joe. Well, we're all obsessed with reaction. That's our whole job as stand ups. To hear like, laughs. To hear yes. laughs, hear a groan, see where we're at, see what we do. It's all feedback. I'm so just, I, comments are, uh, they, they throw us off. I, 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 I agree with that. Uh, but I would say my new stance on all this is I, I'm tired of Violence. feeling afraid. Let's be. Let's all be honest. <laughs> Nobody, none I of hate us black are. People. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> none of us are not reacting to trolls because we want to be the bigger man. We're all not reacting to trolls because of a fear of what it will, what it will bite us in the ass with. Mm. So you interact. Also, well, you unlock that. Once you unlock that door, you're. you're it's a whole world them. of you're right. to them. mayhem. It's right. not good. But my point is, but and that's my well, it's that's part of my point. It's part of it is if, every troll I, is Amber Heard. It'll feel good to trash them for a second, but then in the end, you're like, I should not. Have uh, but here's the thing: it's not even trashing them. It's just it doesn't have to be at least yeah. right. It's any interaction where I don't agree with you. The troll mentality is, is I'm going to go harder now. Yeah. So eventually, it's going to lead back to fake review bombings or whatever the fuck it is to hurt you in any way they can. That is where it will end up. And I'm just quite frankly tired of living in fear of <laughs> a that. taste buds anthrax package. You know, like yeah. yeah, I'm like tired of it. I'm tired of being. I'm tired of going. Well, God forbid I speak my mind about this because that group of fans then will come after me and do this to me, right. or these yeah. people will get my personal information and post it, or these people I have, a, have an album them. coming out and they'll ruin the reviews or right. whatever the fuck it is. I'm tired of living in some marginal fear of what these fucking animals on the internet will do where it suddenly takes away basic decency and human interaction. If anyone, and, and I'm not being cliche, I hope I'm not at least. If somebody says to you, if somebody said any of these things to you in public, you would never just walk away. You no. would say, hey man, why are you saying that right now? Like, uh, Wait, no, 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 let's talk You're about this. You're trying to reason with a You're person. Reasoning. But, because they're not looking for but there aren't that many lunatics out there. The, no, but based the on what you're seeing on the internet, do you see what I'm saying? You never would encounter that many lunatics ever in real life. Have you been on the anything. one train lately? Sure. Well, I'll, I'll yeah. tell you this: I am a troll, and I enjoy trolling. But at least you admit to being a troll. These the, people think they're normal. No, they know they're trolls. But you, would, I disagree. They know they're trolls. The point is to get a reaction from you, so it doesn't matter what I say. If it's like, what do you, what do you weird about your glasses? I'm like, your glasses. Oh, that's not, that's a non-starter. Your pants are tight. That's not working. Hey, I hate Egypt. That's not working. Curly right. hair is dumb. Until I get something to fucking get a rise. I had a problem out of you. with every one of those things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Until no, I get but, something out of you, I don't care because I'm a troll. But, I'm just trying to rise. But out of your you. thing is, your thing is, is I'm going to make outlandish jokes that piss off people that are being way too sensitive. Yeah. And you're not going to make them at anybody. You're just going to make them publicly and I, watch people just react. Yeah. There's a big <laughs> difference. That's not what I'm talking about. There's a big difference. You're. I'm talking about people that seek you out to say things personally to you that are in a in a certain way personal and we have to play this whole game of be the bigger man don't respond if they if you respond they're getting to you how many times will you write something back to a troll and they'll go bro all i care about is i got you to respond <laughs> fuck right, you and you're right, like right. you're like no dude like uh, that, that uh, I, I had, i'm had, just so sick of it had, i'm just so sick yeah, of it after all that kobe stuff that everyone's coming at me like death threats and shit and i had fun with it i was like at some point I'm like well i know this is happening so i wrote to my friends i was like hey if you guys got a stand-up clip the eyes are on my instagram right now <laughs> we can get some eyeballs that's smart yeah and so michelle gave me one i probably a couple of you guys gave me one <laughs> monroe martin was one of the guys who's like gave me a clip so I put it up, and people were calling him. I mean, really dark, racist. Really, stereo, because in like, defense of Kobe. In defense of Kobe, yeah, <laughs> calling him <laughs> a coon, like How old perfect. style shit. Amazing. And Monroe's like, he didn't have a dad, so he's his own dad. Right. So he's like, hey, let's meet up. 
Let's fucking fight if you want to fight. And they're like, oh, I didn't mean it like that. Right. <laughs> yeah, Monroe didn't take it at oh, all. I remember I was right after Ari did that. We were leaving the stand. I was like, oh, I'll go to the cell with you. I was like, taxi? <laughs> yeah. Dude, taxi? I remember walk- I I'm, remember- not, I'm not taking this walk with Ari. <laughs> it was right when I moved back to New York. And I remember walking around with Ari and like, because we lived in the same neighborhood. We lived like two blocks from each other. So I hung out with Ari a lot right after that happened. And uh, I remember every time somebody would come up and be like, are you Ari Shafir? I'd be like, oh, shit. (laughs) (laughs) And then they always were like, I love your stuff. And it's like, yeah, in person, it's always, I love your stuff or bird is fat. It's never anything bad. (laughs) There you go. Oh, simple, Joe. I don't have any problem with Ari. (laughs) But I mean, am I making, I don't know if I'm making sense. Like, uh, You can't talk to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got Uh, it. You talk to him because you think they're normal and then they're not normal. I was like, oh, my bad. You got me. Congrats. But you got to think like the way I'll make a joke about Amber Heard or Elon Musk or or Trump or whatever. They think they're doing oh, that to us. This is my doctor. I and I'm like, oh, shit. what are you going to tell you? Drink too much? His liver's Oh, bad. simple, Joe. Your liver's <laughs> fucked. <laughs> oh, shit. But you got to remember, you're, you had a TV show. Yeah. You're on uh, whatever, you know, YouTube. Like, you got a million views. They think they're just talking to a celebrity or something. So they think they're talking to a web designer. They don't really think they're actually talking to you until you respond like, oh, shit. But, like, imagine all the jokes we made about Biden or Johnny Depp fire. or whatever or yeah. Will Smith. It'd be great if Biden really responded like, to a couple that's what of I'm Yeah, saying. what if Amber Heard wrote back and be like, hey, that's actually really hurtful. I'm like, oh. Well, yes. I and they think that an about us. They're not gonna, they don't think we're going to write back. Yeah. But we're fucking comedian retard drunks. Oh, like, yeah. Well, Ari, would, any you, power. would any of you yeah. roll the dice and sleep with Amber Heard? Yes. For sure. Of course. She's clearly what good are you pussy. Kidding? Clearly got great I think we're all in agreement here. Yeah. 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 I mean, do it for the it's, story. Yeah. It's not even yeah. a roll of the dice. It will be the cut, top cut the four five years later. Though. Cut the four years later. Oh, simple Ari. You fucked Amber Heard and she ruined your life. Hoping she does OnlyFans to pay the legal bills. I mean, really? imagine, that would be fun. Imagine afterwards, we're like, what did you think was going to happen? She wasn't going to go after you in court? Like, I don't know. She blew me so well. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough. I mean, she's a good looking lady. She's not yeah. that hot. She's really? just. She's hot. She's Cute. attractive, yeah. She's not like, oh my God. Elon which was, which like, was the worst like decision, Cummings. that or Mordecai for Johnny Depp? What do you think? <laughs> what? I think uh, maybe Secret Window. <laughs> yeah, she's she's like. That was a Polanski looking, film. But that's, really? That's mm hmm. It, honestly, he was slumming me. when he was with her. Come on. Yep. She's fine. She's got a track record. She's got a quite a, a list of dudes. Who else? Mark. Uh, Elon Musk. No wow. way. She fucked Musk. Oh, yeah. For a while. I think um, DiCaprio. We're looking at John, uh, James Franco here. Oh, Franco. That's what wow. I'm thinking. He's got a he, got, he got in trouble. Too. No one understands yeah. what actresses are. They're just fucking everybody. Sure. Yeah. Elon Musk said after something that toxic, he had to buy Twitter. So. <laughs> <laughs> he had to stop yeah. people talking shit about him. <laughs> right, right. Oh, there they are. Look at that. Wow. Wow, she's a small lady. All, they all, all the actresses are tiny, I feel like. Well, Uma Thurman's, I think, 6'1". Yeah, Tom Cruise is five, yeah. he's like Rogan. Five, seven. Oh, yeah, I guess Nicole Kidman, also tall. Tall, tall, cup mm-hmm. and what a- <laughs> Australians. Should we do the rest of the news stories now or no? Oh, yeah, what news else stories? you got? Oh, yeah, the ones you sent me were funny. Yeah, we got, we, I mean, we, we Why don't we do, do a bit? Oh, here's a good one. Brazil police find over $3 million worth of Nazi memorabilia in pedophiles' home. This is wow. great. While the suspect was already being arrested on child rape charges. Charges, he is now facing additional co- counts of racial discrimination and illegal possession of firearms. I like how this was not a story but for just fucking children. And there's like, oh, he's a Nazi memorabilia? <laughs> oh, this is real. <laughs> also, who who does the uh, the appraising of Nazi memorabilia? This three is million three million worth. Yeah. worth. This isn't just your... your it's the worst uh, episode uh, of Pawn Stars uh-huh. ever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's the grandfather. auction house going, say it's three million, not one. <laughs> Can you imagine if I should we suffer? Uh, your boyfriend is a Nazi and it gets worse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a pedophile. I mean, I feel bad for Kumia, but... <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's right around here. Damn, not, what's, what's Brazil, the deal with Nazi the memorabilia? The Nazis went to South America. Argentina. Argentina. Oh, wait, the boys from Brazil, was that... That's close that enough. That? Argentina is I was. Sure, they branched. Yeah. I yeah. played for the Argentinian um, Jew- Jewish League volleyball team. <laughs> they canceled when I was in Israel, and there was like, could somebody form an Argentina team? And we did, and they, they chanted for us because we didn't know what we were doing. They're like, Argentina. Uh, <laughs> do you guys want to do bits instead? No. no, no, no. Fuck what off, else? Salacuse. <laughs> idiot. Go back here. to the news. We, this is Nazi right, stuff. Got one more. This is good stuff. 
Scientists just found that several anti-5G products meant to protect people from cell networks emit dangerous radiation. Ooh. Ooh. You got to love that. You got to love someone who goes out of the way to protect themselves, something that we all do, eats it in the end. Yes. The items, which include necklaces and sleep masks, emit low levels of ion radiation. They can dang- be dangerous and worn consistently and permanently damage the tissue and the DNA. Huh. How about that? It's like an airbag that kills you. It's like not supposed to happen. Right. Yeah, it's like, it's like uh, it'll stop you from a crash, but it's got asbestos in it. Damn. <laughs> Heavy asbestos. You guys rock sleep masks ever? Planes once in a while. I love them. They nah, do the never. job. Blocks never. out the light. It's great. And they feel like you're being hugged like an autistic person. Like, I love there's it. There's something in it. <laughs> yeah, my dog. I used to have a Chihuahua, and it was the most annoying dog. And you put a a little thing on its chest. It was called a thunder jacket. Thunder jacket. You know about it? Yeah. And they yeah, would just kind of. That's one. They love it. It's a hug. It's a nonstop hug. It's a hug. Instead of barking, they would go da. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thirty-seven jelly beans. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might be it for the news. No, there was another one. Mugshot. No, you sent me some. I had two. Oh, we I went to of. a few before you got here, Ari. Oh, the Rikers. There's, oh, there's a whole new set of news the, stories the Matt, that Matt sent us. Should the huh? Rikers inmate you? Yeah, yes. well, what do you What's got on that? that? I mean, I love cheating to get ahead. I, I, when, <laughs> listen, Chael Sonnen <laughs> won a fight against somebody, and he, he held onto the cage as the guy was trying to lift him up. And the guy was like, well, you should have been deducted a point. And he said, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Damn. And this guy is getting his rapes in. Damn. He's getting it in no matter what. And he goes, I'll say, oh, I'm a girl. I'm a girl. Whatever it takes. And the swimmer, good luck to you too. Leah Thomas. Sure. You're winning fucking medals. You weren't going to yeah. do that as a fucking dude. I don't know. We need to compare Leah Thomas <laughs> to this guy. Though, yeah. this is, they're both at the top of the game. Uh, at Penn top State. The game. It's got, right they're, there. They're Your second best. Numbers. This woman, whatever. No one's going to care. I said guy for that one. Ooh. It's a rapist. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> How dare you? Matthew, you sent him the other news stories? Yeah. Salakis, you should have gotten some other news stories. Ooh, I don't. Did you send a new one, Matt? There it is. Hey, From Shakalaka. The Thanks, power Peter. Of the Let's see what we got. Uh, Florida bride and her caterer? Is that yep. It? Wow. Uh, allegedly served cannabis lace food to unknown guests. Several of the unwitting guests became so stoned they had to be hospitalized. Damn. Listen. Listen. Dosing. I'm not against dosing. <laughs> <laughs> because that's usually the only way to get some people there. You got to go against their will. It's it's fine. It's just weed. Or it's just molly. or it's People just acid, are hospitalized. No. The the mistake they made. Let's just say I, I made a mistake with people Bert. eat a lot of weddings. Sorry, I made a mistake with Bert. I didn't get his wife too. Uh, and I made uh, this guy. Once they started calling the cops, at that point he goes, guys, guys, you're on weed. You're, he should have just told them you're on weed. Right. We've all we've all done apology? it. Mark and I are not Official. potheads, so we've taken it. And we've been like, what the fuck? Oh, dude, it feels like it's never gonna end. The, the like edible is end. a different ball game. It's a it's a six hour to to twelve hour trip. I wouldn't need to be hospitalized, but I'd have to go home and rethink some things. Yeah, uh, um, Kim Cogden got me at Skankfest. I saw that. On what? Yeah, and and I I mean, it's not like I haven't done acid before. I'm not a fucking dork. But like oh. I was fucked up on acid and I opened up my hotel room they put me in and it was a fucking view of downtown Houston and I opened up the windows, it's floor to ceiling, I got all my bedspreads, brought it over to the window. Wow. And I just chilled for like five hours just staring at the city. Damn. It was great, but I couldn't hang out with everybody. Negative, positive. It was a fucking great vibe. You made the most of it. Thank you. There you go. See, you've been dosed and you've dosed. It's true. What's good for the goose is good for the anal. Can't, all right. All right. Uh, a man allegedly threatened to bomb the Merriam-Webster offices over the dictionary definitions of girl Ooh. and woman. You know what's good about this story? It could either be a conservative or a liberal. It could go either yeah. way. You're right. You're right. That's true. Where you're like, is this a dude who is like, a woman is born a woman? Or it could be a guy who's like, how dare you? Say yeah. it's a woman born How a woman. dare you try to define what a woman is? Without it a, really is. A, it signifies who we are now. It's not just like I'm against it, but like I'll threaten to bomb you over. I don't agree with you over words. Well, which one is it? Can yeah, we figure that it? out? Yeah, what is it? Uh, is it a blue-haired lady or I'm is it going, a guy in a golf uh, shirt? It says the California. I'm this, this new Batman movie is gonna have a really shitty villain. If, if Joker is like, <laughs> yeah. you guys need to. I, why'd I bomb the hospital? Because you guys aren't up to date on gender identity. Okay, <laughs> cis cucks. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> oh, here's what I said. It was definitely a female. Include. Of relating to or being the sex that typically has the capacity to bear young or produce eggs, and having gender identity that is the opposite of male. Again, could go either way at this point. No, it no, could be I think right it's or obvious. Which what? one is it? 
I think it's a it's a psycho uh, lefty here. Hmm. What could be it? the other way. It's California. It could be either. It's got to be. Yeah, Couldn't it be point. like, no, it's not typically having a gender identity that is the opposite of male. It's a chick. I'm, guess, I'm guessing psycho lefty, but I didn't read this I'm article. I'm guessing psycho so lefty. What, I mean, which one is it, Matt? One photo know? and we'd, we'd figure it out. Yeah. Hey, Peters, do we know? Who? All right. It's going to be a lady who looks like Matt Peters. That's my guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which you don't want to see. Oh, Simple Joe. Good to have you back there. Joe Roses. Are we going to call this episode the Simple, Simple Joe? Simple Joe Bourbons. <laughs> and food. There you go. We got to do a Patreon stuff. Oh, that's what? right. What? Three in a day? A third episode? It's, it's a full time anal. Oh, my God. God damn it. You got a dude. photo, Sally? Oh, yeah. No, let's just do this last story. It's too good. Oh, this is so good. I read this earlier. Take it, JoJo. Match the crime to the midget. Oh, mugshot. Black yeah, DJ it. accused of wearing blackface as an Arizona PTA event by woke education leaders says he was horrified to learn of their complaints and initially thought it was a joke. So he did like a 70s throwback DJ thing, and he wore a wig, and they accused him of putting on blackface. Turns out he's a black guy. How can you be black face if you're not even talking about the face? <laughs> we gotta get make sure Joe is a mic too. Oh, That's Joe needs a mic. Yeah, switch back. Why? Oh. That's the point. They thought he was being racist and wear like a white uh, guy. So they thought up. his actual skin color yeah. because of the wig was yes. makeup. Interesting. So if you're black, you can do black face. Do you see this is how headlines read, by the way, now, like rambling children? DJ accused of blackface wearing blackface by a woke person at an event because they got confused by it. It's like what the fuck happened to, like, succinct uh, Yeah, instead of like, reporting. hey, it turns out a bunch of losers were wrong. Yeah, That's the story. So, hey, right. losers wrong again. After the woman was corrected and saying, no, this is a black guy. Let me guess like, what she didn't do. Go, oh, shit, I'm an idiot. <laughs> no, nope, she said, still, it's wrong. Still. <laughs> what? Let me guess, white woman? Dude, all say. my Amazing Racist stuff, when, it, when I told people, like, this is fucking wrong, what happens to Mexicans or, or whatever, it's like they have to go out of their way to work. And I'm like, oh, those are actually all paid actors. We gave them 50 bucks each. We're actually giving money to the Latino community. They're just, it's a setup. And they go, still. <laughs> Wait, still? You thought I was delivering Mexicans to INS, and instead yeah. you think I'm doing a sketch, and you're equally angry? <laughs> Not even like, well, a little less, I guess. You, you, know, you know who's jealous black people get to do blackface? Is uh, Justin Trudeau. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you saw this. You're like, that looks pretty good. Then, but not me. Blackface that's... with no repercussions. <laughs> Must be nice. That's her. <laughs> and that's the blackface guy. And that's the complaint. And she said, well, can we see her the place for the Celtics? quote? Like her reaction quote? Yeah, I'll look for it, sir. It's Man, crazy. White they people won't are getting go. mad at black people for blackface now. It's, it's bad. The arrogance of the, the arrogance. That used to be called racism. The white is uh, incredible. Yeah. The arrogance the to go still instead of go, shit, I was Ray walking up the wrong tree on this one. Damn. I accused a black guy of putting on black makeup. Turns out, I thought black skin was the same as black makeup. I I'm mean, an idiot. Yeah. No, that can't be. It's just, it's unreal. <laughs> it's un-fucking-real. It's bad. It's, 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 we've, we've gone to a, a backwards land. We should wrap up because we got to do a Patreon. Yeah, line. yeah. Wait, is wrap up like... We should, we should end this. Oh, I thought you meant we all do a wrap. We all do. Yeah, we're all making raps. Oh, look at this. Yeah. Let me be clear. A black man apparently in blackface is an entirely different discussion than a white person. However, I did not state that the person was white. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. It was assumed that my intent, and perhaps it was, but nonetheless, looking on his Facebook page, it seems at the very least he is in darker makeup. If <laughs> not blackface. Ah, he's not in any darker makeup. Down. He, you say he put on darker makeup. No, lady, that's his It's skin. not your place to say it, you stupid liberal Just get white out of twit. It. Yeah. <laughs> God damn we it! We got too much time on our hands. We gotta send this lady to a like a like a boot camp or a, you know she a looks like shop. She looks like a fucking comedian who goes after fucking white dudes all the time. Nah. Oh. <laughs> Easy there, big fella. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I'm not gonna get into it. Is. Uh, all right, well, let's uh, plug, some, later, plug some stuff. Yeah, Taste what are you gonna buds, be? What are you gonna Skeptic do? Tank. Yep, Taste yep. buds this comes out in a year and a half. <laughs> Taste buds on YouTube, uh, and then. Uh, of course, uh, our taping, May 19th and 22nd in Houston, Texas, at the Come and Take It Festival, being held at the Secret Group in Houston, Texas. Uh, one show Thursday, one show Sunday, and then in between those shows on Friday and Saturday, the, the 20th and 21st, I'll be at uh, the Creek and Cave in Austin, Texas. All right, and Taste Buds is great. Uh, Thank minus you. Taste Joe. Taste Buds is great. 
Thank you. Yeah. yeah. One of the worst I, guests of Sex Buzz. I love the show. I can't stand Simple Joe on that show. Yeah, I can't. I know, I know. Oh, I'm so no, simple. simple. Joe. I love it's you It's really, guys. every clip is gold. It's it's a great show. That's great. Yeah, yeah, you're Skeptic sure. Tank, yeah. Ari Shafir, love it. You're sweet. What that are, guy got a lot of airtime, that troll of yours. You gave him a lot of airtime. That's what they want. I you know. Want. He's I like, gotta get a it. new website. Look how much better yours looks. I just redid mine. What are you kidding? This looks like a 1998... This is Squarespace? Yeah. Mine's Squarespace. What am I doing wrong? Uh, you have lots of lack of education. You're fighting with <laughs> so trolls. That's the difference. Look at mine. Sure, yeah, yeah, that that looks looks those are the old days. Angel Fire? What the fuck is that? HTML over here. <laughs> Angel Fire. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta redo my Squarespace site. Yeah, what the hell is this? Oh, right. wait. So, Ari's got a sold out uh, Ari show. Ari will be in Jacksonville on May 12th to the 14th. You're Kansas not on bike. Yeah, I got one right here. Oh, okay. Oh, May shit. May 20th to the 21st in Kansas City and Austin. In May 24th through the 29th. At My special tape the Creek in the Cave. The 12th. It'll be out in the summer. Hell yeah. Fall. YouTube? Uh, we'll see. I just shoot them first and then we figure that out. Right. I don't want to get All distracted right. while I'm filming. Well, Netflix is through the floor, so we'll see what happens. Maybe I can buy them. Yeah. All right. All right. right. Website. I'll be at. Wow, that's uh, a beauty. Uh, that's yeah, a fucking gorge read. website. I, you got to make that bigger. Looks as good as your cock. Yeah. What are you doing in Denver for one night only? You're not doing the fucking... I'm at the Paramount one night only, the Irvine Ooh. Improv. Uh, keep going. Keep going. Addison Improv in Dallas. Bricktown in OKC. One of the best clubs. One of the best new clubs. Great Love new it. room. Love it. Uh, laugh it up in Poughkeepsie one night only. You keep just going. In, keep in going. Uh, Stand up live. Stand up live. In, June first, first week. Uh, of you were June. just there. I was just there. Chicago at the Vic. Cleveland. The Pages in Minnesota the night before me, June sixteenth. Yes, Minneapolis. Come on out. Chicago, the Vic, the night before me, June seventeenth. Irvine, you got to go faster. Come on, there we go. Red Bank, New Jersey. Houston Improv. All right, laugh out loud in San Antonio. Sammy the Bull, what do you got? I'm all uh, Providence. I got Chicago taping a special at the Den. Six shows, we're taping all of them. So beautiful. Beacon is sold out. When is a beacon? Uh, Beacon, we passed that shit, dude. That was that wait. Was congratulations. Cool. You already did it? No, but we're this is we we're back on October. We're moving studios. This we is a beautiful website, Toronto, too. Toronto. Thank you. I didn't do it. I had nothing to do with it. Toronto. Uh, fucking Houston, West Palm, San Jose, all that shit. Y'all see you around. Dania Beach. Love yeah, you guys. Yeah, fun man. room, fun Samuel.com slash Great shows. frames. We might be drunk pod.com for, for merch. Patreon.com slash we might be drunk pod. Two special guests today. And yes. We had, and we had Salamanca. Hell yeah. Amazing. Looking good. Thanks, boys. Google we bitch. We love you. Let's oh. suck dicks. Sunday's the day for my name. About the fucking post, and I get down in the same way. Up on the roof, like a cop's coming, and naked Samuel is feeling dangerous. I'm out to lunch here in New Orleans. This woman doesn't look like I remember.